And all right, Junior, uh, you told us about these starts, how important it is to get help. What do you think about this one? Who's going to be able to jump out front? That high line, is it the fastest? Well, it's really the pushes from that second row and the third row. You can link up two or three cars there in either lane and really create a lot of momentum off into turn one. We're about to start the round of eight. Again, the possibility of locking up a spot in the championship four in front of these eight playoff drivers. Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson making up row one. We're racing in Las Vegas. Trex Jr. with a good push early for Christopher Bell, and he's able to jump out front. Larson has that second spot. Third still contested. William Byron on the bottom of the racetrack, surging ahead now of Martin Trex Jr. And here comes Byron challenging his teammate for second. See what Jeff Burton was talking about in the pre-race, the difference between the bottom, the middle, and the top in one and two. William Byron, the only one running the bottom, the other, the 20 of Christopher Bell and that blue and white five of Kyle Larson chose the middle last time. We'll see if they stick with that strategy again this time at the rougher end of the racetrack. Larson with the momentum now as he's got to the back bumper of the 20 of Christopher Bell. We'll see if they take different lines. And here comes Larson. He goes to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to take the lead away. Yeah, he's going to clear off turn two down the back straight away. See what kind of momentum the 20 car has to fight back. They both to the bottom of the racetrack. Air a little bit dirty for the 20 car. He's going to lose a little bit. Truex back there running a higher line, trying to battle for third with Byron. Logano out of line, and he's trying to take a spot away from Alex Bowman. Now here comes Martin Shrek's Jr. fighting back against the 24 of Byron. It was documented well in the pre-race about the playoff struggles of Martin Truex Jr., the regular season champ, yet to score a top 15, if you can believe it, in the playoffs. He said it himself. He feels like they're slipping through the playoffs, barely getting by. Now's the time. If you're going to draw a line in the sand and find some improvement, the round of eight, I think, is when it has to happen. Trying to clear on the bottom right now. He's clear off the turn two. Byron just struggling a little bit. Chris Buescher back there trying to close in on this battle as well, the 17 car. Mile right. and a half haven't been great for Chris Buescher, but yeah. this race has been wonderful as far as the start. As his starting position was very good. He looked good in practice, and now he's fighting for that fourth spot. And yeah, 20, 24 there, Byron struggling just a little bit, three and four. And not enough room. It looked like he was going to slide up the racetrack, try to take that spot away from Byron, but it wasn't going to happen. Marty. I don't think there's a lot of panic in the 24 camp. They've kind of fallen back a few spots here for William Byron after starting third, now back to the fifth position. But Jeff, they told me this morning, our car is so good on the long run. That's where we feel like the strength of our car was in practice yesterday. So when you know you have a good long run car like you had so often in your career, Jeff, do you have to wait it out early in the run? That's the biggest key. So Junior, you know what it's like to have a long run car and have to wait it out early in a run. Well, I think that you know, Byron and those guys. I'm not too worried about it either, but I've seen his car slip a little bit in that dirty air. I expected his car to have a little bit more fire off speed here, but we'll see what it does on the long run. He needs to stop losing positions. I know that. He doesn't want to fall too far back, not only into the back side of the top 10, but the air gets dirtier. If you got a bad driving race car and you fall it further back into the pack, it's going to drive worse and worse with every car that goes by. All right, Jeff, you just came off of the racetrack. Any predictions as to when we'll see drivers work their way up to the fence, right up to the wall? Yeah, I'd say around lap 15 to lap 20, I think drivers will start being forced to get out there. As the speed comes off of the cars because the tires falling off, that's when you're going to be tempted to go up top, and that's when we'll see if it works or not. Kyle Larson already messing with it a little bit, not real high, but in the middle of the racetrack. Three wide here. Ross Chastain up high. Right in the middle is Ryan Blaney and down low, Alex Bowman. Let's get tight right there. 
between those cars and everybody's arguing they don't want to give up spots. Looks like that Chastain's going to get through. Bowman's going to have to settle behind both the cars. All of kind of lucky really right there not to have any contact. That was 9th, 10th, and 11th. Chastain holding on to that ninth spot right now. So Blaney's starting 12th, he's trying to work his way forward. Looks like his car fired off really well. See if he can take the fight back to the one car to try to take that spot away from a non-playoff driver, that's a stage point. A non-playoff driver would be claiming up here in the top 10. Here's Brad Kozlowski, and it looks like maybe a little bit of damage to the right side. They're running at the top of the racetrack right here off turn four. Just barely going to have a few guys probably make that mistake right there. Just that wall right the, off of turn four, the wall kind of comes back across the racetrack in front of the line. When you're running that high side as well, you got to really give a lot of room there for that wall because it jumps out in front of you. And there's not as many drivers running the top over there. More drivers are running the middle of the racetrack in one and two than there are in three and four. So the track's still a little bit dirty. It's not going to have the grip that one and two has, but that's what cleans it up. You know, people being forced to run up there trying to make a pass. That's what eventually will lay that rubber down and allow that top lane to work. See one and two, people are trying it. Just not as confident about it over in three and four. We expected a lot of cars to run the high side yesterday in the Xfinity race. They never got there. The tire didn't put it down a ton of rubber, and the cars were very loose throughout the race, so the bottom groove was really where you wanted to be. What you got on Christopher Bell there, Marty? Well, you can see Bell's kind of running the middle of the track, Junior, and this racetrack at Las Vegas, very line sensitive. Adam Stevens, his crew chief, asked him to maybe move down a little bit to try and catch Kyle Larson, and here's what Bell said. I can't do that, Adam. Cannot run through the bumps that quick. Good work. So, Junior, the bumps, I mean, they think people at home may watch this race and go, bumps on the racetrack. How tough are the bumps here at Las Vegas behind the wheel? Yeah, I think that's why you're seeing cars running different lines in one and two, trying to avoid going through the bumps. If your car doesn't go through those very well, you've only got one option, and that's to run the higher line. But if the bottom of the racetrack is faster and everybody's running quick on the bottom, then you're going to just suffer and bleed lap time all day long. 13 laps complete, and it's been Kyle Larson out front for 11 of them. Chris Bell led two laps, but Larson now pulling away.
NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, where the racers stay in Las Vegas. Progressive Insurance, save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. And by Northern Tool. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Beautiful skyline of Las Vegas and Las Vegas Motor Speedway, located about eight miles just to the north of the strip. And Kyle Larson still has a little over a half a second lead over Christopher Bell. Then it's Martin Shrex Jr., Chris Busher, and William Byron, the top five all playoff drivers, all with an opportunity to gain as many points as they can at the end of stage one, but also that win in advance is so important. See Denny Hamlin in the 11 creeping up in the 12th position. Chastain and Bubba Wallace right in front, 11th and 10th. And as we get 22 laps into this run, it's worth reminding everybody as we ride on board the Coke Zero Sugar Cam on top of the roof of Hamlin's car. Remember, two cars started in the back, right? The nine of Chase Elliott, the 99 of Suarez, and that was because of accidents in practice after having right rear tires go down, go flat. And this is due to the crew chiefs, the teams trying to get all they can out of the race car, which is the goal. You see it. Right rear goes down, flat into the wall, a heavy impact. What they're doing is it's all aerodynamically driven, if you can believe this. You want to get the back of the car to the diffuser as low as possible. And mechanically, you're kind of out of ideas. You can't just travel it more. So you actually just take air out of the right rear tire. It squishes more like a like a beach ball that's lost some air. It gets squished a little bit more. The back goes down. The problem is if you go too low in air, you could damage that right rear tire. I bring that up because it normally doesn't happen right away. It happens longer into the run. 23 laps in currently. We'll see if the garage here took note of those issues of practice. Riding on board with Reddick, Toyota camera as out front of him, Ryan Blaney. Just passed him for seventh place driving through the field. The battle for the lead is heating up though between Christopher Bell and the 20 car. Kyle Larson out front in the five. Let's see which line they run. Christopher Bell's ran him down. Christopher's gonna go to the higher line. Haven't seen many people make a lot of time in three and four using the high line, but it may be coming in like you said, Jeff. Lap 23, this is right around the time where we may see people moving up off the bottom of the racetrack in three and four for time. Down at one and two, it's about trying to get through the bumps. Where do you want to go to try to get that car where you have as much lateral grip as it's bouncing through that part of the racetrack? Christopher Bell, his car looks really good. You can see he's just trying to be on the inside of that five car. Just search for the clean air. Five car Lars, you can see it wiggling around. The back of the car is loose. He does not have the rear grip that he's wanting at the moment. They had a close call. Steve, you showed us what happened with Chase Elliott and the right rear tire going down. It was a lap before in practice where Kyle Larson said, I feel some vibration. I'm going to bring it to you. He came onto pit road. Sure enough, there was a blister on his right rear tire as well. Yeah, very lucky he felt that. And normally they don't get warning until it just completely goes away. Drew X is closing in on this duo as well. We see him right there in the screen running third. Christopher Bell has sort of been challenged by the arrow on the five car. The five's kind of trying to take his line away, put him in dirty air whenever he can. That's allowed this 19 to close in. William Byron and the eight of Las Vegas native Kyle Bush has Morgan and Morgan on board camera that we get to take a great look from. That's track level right on the front bumper. And right there with them. Right behind this eight car is Blaney lurking, trying to pass these cars. He just drove through this field. I'm really impressed. We haven't seen the speed we wanted to out of this 12 car in the state in the playoffs, but here today, closing in on an opportunity to get into the top five in, in stage one, start at 12th. In practice yesterday, Blaney said something that I thought was very interesting and I think a positive for this team. The concern for Blaney all year long, a mile and a half. Great battle continued for the lead is that this 12 car gets looser and looser as the runs go. Does not have rear grip. Yesterday in practice, he said was the opposite. He actually got tighter, meaning that the front end did not turn as well. I think that's a major positive for this team. Christopher Bell making a move. Here he goes for the lead. Bell to the inside of Larson. 
Christopher Bell dives to the bottom of the racetrack and he'll complete the pass but that momentum that Larson has on the high side we'll see if it works on the front stretch for him. I think we also Great will job see. Always, man. Take care of your stuff. We'll also see how good this 20 car is now with clean air. He's been sort of challenged being behind the five and he reclaimed the lead having sat on the pole. As Coach Joe Gibbs watches on, Christopher Bell back to the lead after starting on the pole today. You know, they really felt like the strength of this car, even though they qualified on the pole, was actually the longer runs. That's coming to fruition right now as Larson might lose another spot to Martin Truex Jr. back there. But Bell showing that long run speed and see pit stops coming up very quickly. You guys talked about the tire issues yesterday. So teams want to be on the short end of that. So you'll see pit stops coming up in about eight or nine laps. And two parts of that. If you're struggling, you can come early, maybe even four or five laps away. Come in lap 35. If you're good, you want to get all the way to halfway of this run, which is lap 40. Now the issue, leaving pit road under green at full speed, no pace laps, the heat tires up. You might have to make adjustments to the tire pressure. Green flag pit stops happening at Las Vegas, working lap 34. You saw how loose Kyle Larson was. He wound up leading 26 laps, was able to hang on to second spot there when he came to pit road. And Kyle Busch having a terrific run, ran his way up into the top five. But you saw that track bar adjustment. This car also too loose for Kyle Busch. And we'll expect a lot of pit stops coming up pretty quick, Steve. Dave? Ryan Blaney coming down pit road now, Marty. His car was building free just a little earlier than they wanted it to, so they'll be making their pressure adjustment here for Goodyear Tires and Fuel, Kim. For Chris Buescher, he said, overall, I'm on the free side, but he did note that the ride quality very good on that Ford Mustang, Ford tires, Sunoco Fuel for Chris Buescher under green. Still waiting for Bell. Trex Jr., actually the whole top eight right now as they are running. Uh, still to come to pit road and this is you just know you have to you see we've run 36 out of 80 math says right in the middle cars come to pit road fresh tires feel good you make adjustments you're going to gain some time but i don't hate this call by the 20 of bell the 19 of truex this is kind of one of those be afraid to lose they are going to lose time they may lose the lead to the five car but if a caution comes out right now they look like heroes. There's a ton to gain. This is actually the conservative approach by waiting a little bit longer, Dave. Nine car driver Chase Elliott said the balance is OK. Could be a little freer in the right rear, but that was about it. Starting from the rear of the field, he's been making his way forward. Oh, we hear the one of Ross Chastain got caught speeding on pit road. He'll have to do a pass through penalty. Disappointment. I thought Ross in practice had one of the better cards. It's been an up or down year. Remember Nashville when we came back on the air, took over from Fox. He showed up on the scene and boom, went to victory lane. Great car. I thought he had that reasonable speed today or this weekend again in practice. This speeding penalty is definitely going to put the one car behind. Here he comes, an extra trip down pit road. Also on pit road, the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and the 48 of Alex Bowman. Dave. Rick, remember he was part of that one, two, three finish here for Hendrick Motorsports in the March race. So he'll get four Goodyear tires. His car was tight in the center of the corner and choppy tight on exit, Marty. 
Dave, when I talked to Adam Stevens this morning as Christopher Bell completes another lap on the racetrack leading, he told me this might be in their playbook. And really the reason, Steve, is because the other teams had tire issues. The Toyotas at Joe Gibbs Racing did not. He said if we can run a little bit longer in the stage, that'll help us. But Bell's going to come pit this time. And the problem is he's lost so much time to the five car right now that even with a great pit stop, the 20 of Christopher Bell will absolutely blend behind the five of Larson. You see Truex chasing on pit road on the upper right. You see the track map, the five now just crossing the start finish line. So keep that in mind. Now the five is completing his lap. These guys are going to complete their pit stop. When they leave pit road, they will be blending against the five, and that will be for the lead of the race, Dave. Steve, we saw a little bit of speed out of that Martin Truex car running up in the top three. So he said his car is, though, the same as yesterday, sliding around a little bit off of turn two, Marty. Dave Christopher Bell described his car as edgy free, just need a little bit more rear grip so he can wrap the corner better. Those four fresh Goodyear tires will certainly help. But this is going to be fun. You see top right of your screen. Here comes Larson. Let's watch the blend. Oh, there's, I wish. Not even close. Yeah, I wish we could get them both in the same camera shot. Maybe it's <laughs> on the back stretch. Now, the five of Larson stuck in traffic, but you see it will wait and politely wait and here's bell and here's the 19 so just think about this for later in the race i understand why they did it dead in the middle i like the strategy i don't hate it even losing the lead i, I, I think they are racing for a championship this mess the five in is in right now is is going to be a real issue and it's going to allow the 20 and the 19 on fresh tires to close right back in but think about that that was six laps different in the final stage of the race, you cannot afford to run six laps longer and lose the lead. You may never get it back. So now Larson, after everything cycles out, we'll see the difference. But when we look at it, it's five and a half seconds that is the difference between Larson and Bell as they are on the track. But as you mentioned, a lot of congestion in front of race leader Kyle Larson. Yeah, look who it is, Chase Elliott. You know, he is right there, Kyle Larson trying to lap Chase Elliott. You know, Chase had good speed yesterday. This is the backup car. They were very confident in the backup car, but right now that speed is just not there. Green flag pit stops are complete. Kyle Larson back out front in Vegas. Watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs, South Point 400 from Las Vegas. The race to 1 million is heating up in the NASCAR Powerball playoff. Eight fans, they are locked in for a chance to win $1 million at NASCAR Championship Weekend. Follow the playoffs to see who advances and who will get cut. Powerball, it's the official lottery game of NASCAR. And a hornet's nest here for race leader Kyle Larson he's trying to figure out how to get by uh, these guys that are he's trying to put a lap down you see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fighting to get his lap back yeah, there's a bunch of cars in front of him running side by side and it's really just kind of neutralized him so what we talked about before the the race is that yes there's a championship battle he's going to go three wide there's a championship battle but all these other guys they're trying to salvage a year you know look who's in the picture you know, Stenhouse obviously won the Daytona 500, but most everyone else in this picture is just, you know, they haven't had great years, and they are fighting for their lives. The good news for Larson, as frustrating as this is, if he can make it through this mess clean, 
that Christopher Bell back there, who's feeling good about his car in clean air. All right, you're up next. Good luck getting through there. And you see the difference, right? I mean, the last lap, Christopher Bell was four and a half miles an hour faster than the leader. And that is a touch of fresh tire, but mostly traffic. Yeah, Christopher Bell now has caught up to this traffic, and he's trying to find the right line, negotiate around it as he goes by the seven. And a great run off the top of the racetrack right there. And with the better tires, I, I, would, I would expect his car to navigate through this a little bit better than Larson did. Yeah, because he's got, he pitted on lap 39, and all these guys that he's racing pitted on lap 33, 32, 34. So better tires than all of those guys. One thing that I noted is Christopher Bell's drove away from Martin Trex Jr., put a little bit of distance between him and the 19 car in third. And they came to pit road at the exact same time. So Bell also getting by Chase Elliott. So now it's Larson Bell, Trex Jr., Blaney, Byron, the top five. Still, it's the five playoff drivers that are up there. Then Alex Bowman, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin has made his way up to eighth, and Busher is running ninth. Reddick back there in 11th. Marty. Let's recap the stop for William Byron. Said the car was too free on the first run, still too free here on the second run. After a fairly healthy adjustment from Rudy Fugel, his crew chief on the last stop, they also told him, try the lower line of the racetrack. Your teammate Alex Bowman right behind you is the fastest car on the track, and William has responded by doing that. He's moved to the lower line of the racetrack, just like his teammate, Dave. Nice, tight pit stop for the 11 crew of Denny Hamlin. His car was a little bit loose, so they made an air pressure adjustment to the Goodyear tire before they put them on the car, but he cycled back ahead of where he was running. Car's very good right now for Denny. Kim? Dave, we know rear security is a premium here today. In that first run, Tyler Reddick did not have it. He said, the higher I run, the looser I feel. In fact, a number or a number and a half too loose, the higher he went. They did make a right rear adjustment during that stop. Right now, Tyler, quiet on the radio. We'll see the deeper into this run if he's got the car that he needs. For Caution free race, it's been pretty exciting early between the pit cycle, the traffic offset between Larson and Bell, Hamlin's recovery. I mean, there's been a lot of storylines already. We haven't even really stacked the field up again for another reset. And we need to remind fans, you touched on it earlier, points at the end of stage one. We know that three drivers in the playoffs could win their way in, but there's a guarantee that at least one is going to make it in on points. Three races, four seats. Anybody who's tried to do that for dinner reservation never seems to work. So. That's what's going to happen right here. Ten points for the guy who wins stage one. One point for tenth. Now, if the playoff drivers are still stacked in, as great as those points seem, there's not a lot of movement. Everybody kind of scored them. But if you do make a mistake, or if you are Tyler Reddick currently 11th and get zero points, that's a big change versus, say, Larson, who could potentially win. That's why this update about Hamlin that we were just given and his recovery up inside of the top ten is so valuable because what's on the line in only 27 laps from now? The opposite side, Chris Buescher, right, he's back at ninth. Well, he had a 15-second pit stop, right? So he lost five spots in that green flag cycle. So what was a great start to the weekend for a driver that has never had a top five in a mile and a half, you heard Dale Jarrett say it in the pre-race, he's had some top tens, never had the top five. They have the car. They don't quite have the execution today. Just can't make mistakes. And that wasn't a big mistake, but it was still not as quick as the competitors he's racing against. Kyle Larson out front. First driver to win or race over 900 laps led this year. You got a fast car.
best guys who can rise up and, and really perform in those you know tense moments, huge situations. They end up making it and having shot the championship. Southern 500, baby. I beat your favorite driver. All of them. Oh, good job. Playoffs, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. And this is the time you have to rise to the occasion as it's the round of eight. And we'll start filling those spots for the championship four. Want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. It was Kyle Larson on lap three, turning a lap of 29.417 seconds around this mile and a half racetrack averaging 183.567 miles an hour. Marty. Kyle Larson in clean air right now led 48 laps to this point and Cliff Daniels when he was in traffic after that was over with said hey let's use that as a learning opportunity. He asked Kyle how was the car in that traffic. Uh, tighter for sure I came out in traffic so I was tighter but now it's little similar. I feel like I can use my front tire a little bit more to one as well. Yeah, it's important. Got more changes coming your way. We're just going to keep inching up on it. So Steve, would you use that just like Cliff Daniels did? Say, hey, you were in traffic. What did you learn? And how is it different now that you're in clean air as he gets by another car? That's Daniel Suarez. Yeah, I mean, there's very little practice, zero testing. Um, so the first stage, while it does score points, it's also your test. It's your practice for that final stage. Clean air, you drive, your car drives like X, in traffic like Y. Now some might be, yeah, that's just what you're gonna have. That's the split between traffic um, and clean air, but sometimes Cliff Daniels and his team think of maybe a little bit of an offset or an adjustment that can help one versus the other. Kim, how about the 45 of Tyler Reddick, currently 12th? Yeah, and Tyler typically is one that loves to run the high line, but here's what he's saying about his race car. Just kind of struggling to understand the feel of the car race handling. I don't know what I can trust. All right, 10 more. You have been standing, run in the middle with one and two. Three and four is usually a wash or a loss. And he went on to tell the team when he gets too deep into the throttle, he feels like it gets way too loose. He asked them to tighten him up on the next stop. What was interesting right there was that he said he wasn't real sure what he could trust and what he, he's talking about being loose, but he doesn't know how hard he can push the car without the back of the car coming around on him. So he doesn't have the feel that he's looking for. And he's not just saying, hey, I'm just loose. That's my problem. He's saying, I've got a balance issue, but I can't really identify what my overall grip is. And that's a that's a challenge for a team trying to figure out how to make the car better. Yeah, Caution's come, one, come out. Yeah, we got a problem on the front straightaway car going off into turn one to 43 car. Eric Jones has a problem. Looks like a right rear tire's flat on that car. Absolutely. Very right rear. There's those right rear tires we talked about. Eric was having a good day running 15th too, Junior. The difference in this right rear tire is it doesn't look like hit anything. Now, what kind of damage can be done to the car with if the right rear blows up there and it came off? So that was probably best case scenario for Eric Jones in regard to damaging the car. Yeah, best case for the bodywork. I don't know what's better for the diffuser, to be yeah. quite honest. Yeah. Air in the tire. I know what's better. Air in the tire and not drag all that smoke you see is kind of dragging some of that underbody. And that can, the car can look perfectly um, all in one piece, near perfect, maybe a little marks on the right rear. And it can be down 10 or 20% of total downforce. So, real interesting decision here with 14 laps to go on the stage, 31 laps on their tires. So, new tires are going to be a huge advantage. They only had eight sets of tires to run the entire race kind of three extra when you look at the math. Um, I believe if you're a playoff driver, you cannot afford to not put tires on here because I think you'll have no choice, no chance of scoring points. But does the other cars in the back half of the lead lap save a set of tires and try to get lucky? And Steve, th this tire coming apart, does that drive people on pit road as well? People concerned they might have a tire problem. Yeah, especially if they made any adjustments to go more aggressive, right? That you may have started the race really conservative on air pressure after what you saw in practice with the tire issues, and then you make a step down to get more aggressive. And that was lap 30, 33 on the tire for the 43 car. So uh, it's definitely getting the attention of the team. And they rode. And Dale, we talk about this. Green flag pit stops are different. When you put tires on and ride around under yellow, the whole car is hot and the air pressure builds up nice and slow. But when you leave pit road, Hammer down on the gas with that ice cold tire. It has less pressure than ever. So 
that is probably some of the issue we saw. Remember, that's the same as what happens in practice. We think about failures in practice. There's no pace laps in practice. So the first run of the race, you ride around slow for three laps. Not a big surprise. Nobody had issues. Then we come in, we fire on tires right away on the green. We go out, boom, right rear tire issue right away. So your point about adjustments is absolutely something that every crew chief down there needs to think about. The difference is how many of the non-playoff drivers are willing to get close to the fire, close to the edge where a playoff driver might have to leave himself a little room, a little safety net. Yeah, these are decisions. You know, it's so difficult to make these decisions. You know, wow. You know, you want to just race to get track position, right? We've seen that track position matters so much, but can you afford to make that decision and not put tires on? Steve, explain the tire issue, and we're going to have some fun with your virtual Toyota car. Yeah, let's go into our virtual Toyota car. To understand the tires, first we have to understand the aerodynamics. We're going to look underneath the car, that yellow area. That's the diffuser. The air comes underneath the car. Well, more total downforce. The lower that yellow gets to the back of the to the ground, the more total downforce you have. This is what the car looks like. So to do that, mechanically, you're out of ideas. So let me draw here real quick. You look, basically, the height that right rear is off the ground. Now what we're going to do is take a little air out of the right rear tire. Remember, mechanically, you can't lower the car, so just flatten the right rear tire. Well, look at the difference. I mean, over here at the right, it probably came down an inch. Back here around the diffuser, there's no telling how much lower it is. That's a huge aerodynamic. That is why we run low on air. Remind everybody, this is the nine in practice. Right rear goes down into the fence. You said it earlier, the five of Kyle Larson had one he felt, fortunately, uh, and it wasn't just the nine. Daniel Suarez as well, he got lucky. We thought, stayed out of the outside wall, came around, hit the tire barrier on the inside. So with that, tires will be a big conversation, and tires are what every drivers are looking for as they all come down pit road. It is a busy pit road, Dave. Thankfully, Martin Truex Jr. not reporting any issue like that, but he will get four new Goodyear tires. He gave James Small, his crew chief, two different definitions when he runs a low line and when he runs a high line. They'll make fixes for that. Yeah, Dave, Cliff Daniel said no question. We are pitting. You see Kyle Larson on pit road. He said his biggest problem, clean air of the car, way too free. Also too free for Christopher Bell. But Adam Stevens makes a call for a two-tire stop for Bell. So they get the track position here of those who pitted four tires for a lot of, but a lot of two-tire stops as well, Rick. Yeah, they know it's a sprint to the finish. There's only 12 laps to go in stage one. And so they're going to try that two-tire track position strategy call.
You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs, South Point 400 of Las Vegas. And the 20 of Christopher Bell off pit road and out in front of the field. Marty, was that a easy stop for the 20 team? Well, Rick, so much had been made coming into the playoffs about Christopher Bell swapping crew to dropping pit crews with his pick, uh, teammate Ty Gibbs coming into the playoffs. They were the number three ranked pit crew coming into the playoffs. They've been in the 20s since then. Here's the stop, and here's what Adam Stevens had to say. Almost had an issue there, Bell. We need to stop a little more uh, deliberate and a little harder and almost come off the jack when he got it under there. 10 4. Steve, I talked to Christopher Bell about this. He said he was shocked at the little nuances that this team had to get used to for what Christopher Bell does on pit road. Maybe a surprise to some people at home. Topping a pit crew would seem easy, not necessarily so. Well, Rick, if you and I were pitting the car, we wouldn't notice the difference. But these athletes are so finely trained. Watch this jack man. He is looking at this post five, six feet away, and he jacks that car up right away. I mean, so what they're asking for is for him to, to stop more deliberately. You know, lock the tires up and come to a complete stop. Don't roll into the box. It's the smallest of things that makes a difference. It's kind of like a pitcher. You know, if you have a knuckleballer, like Tim Wakefield just passed away, old school knuckleballer for the Red Sox. He had his own catcher because the ball was so different coming at you. Pit crews and drivers kind of mesh that same way. Yeah, so we talk about how important stage points are coming to 10 to go. Chris Buescher from 4th to ninth, going the wrong way under the green cycle. From 8th to 17th during the pit stop, he is in position to not get points. He will restart 17th as they're 2x2 two two once again coming into the restart zone. It's Bell and Larson again making up the front row. Larson on the outside, Real Bell play. on the inside, back into the gas to go. Still door to door into turn one. Bell now with a little bit of an advantage, but here comes the momentum out of the five. Big run coming on the outside to help Larson off into turn three there. Blaney's trying to get three wide underneath Keselowski. Can't do it. Brad back to the outside of Reddick. Reddick with a flood just got clear right there. Not able to do it. A lot of side drafting with the leaders down the front straightaway. Two versus four tires, Larson versus Bell. Larson with four fresh tires on that pit stop, and he'll clear the 20 of Christopher Bell. See that 12 car, Blaney trying to push the six car, Keselowski past the 45. Just, just able to do it right there. Keselowski's clear now. Side by side still with Truex. Now going three wide. Kyle Bush to the inside. Blaney on the outside. Truex in the middle. Truex and Blaney trade a little paint right there. They were touching on the exit of turn two there. And they'll touch a little more as they get ready to go into three. Oh, Truex is trying to keep that three wide. He did not want Blaney to be able to drive across his nose like he did now. Look at Byron at the oh, top of the racetrack. No. He almost lost it right there. It almost got into the right rear quarter panel of Bush. Riding along with Hamlet and that Coke Zero Sugar on board. And yes, it's 193 laps to go, but the stage points are being paid in six. That's why you're seeing the aggressive racing. Did Hamlet clear with Harvick? Carson Hosevar in that 42, going by Michael McDowell now. On the outside, we saw Busher in the 17, also trying to make up some ground, but the laps are winding down, and Busher's only up to 14. Hamlin to the inside of Byron right here. Hamlin slides up in front, takes the spot away. Watching from the Hunt Brothers Pizza from Kevin Harvick. Harvick right now running in that 10th position. Coming through turn four, where they've got a nice sign up there for him. Saying forever, thank you, Kevin. Across the strike, under four laps to go. Larson, Bell, Kozlowski, Reddick, Blaney, the top five. You see how tight the points are. Two points separating Bell and Hamlin as they're running.
Truex and Blaney side by side. Almost contact again. Blaney almost catches the wall, yanks the steer wheel just to try to miss the fence. These two are going at it. Coming to the end of this stage. Blaney there. can't give up a spot. I'm sorry, Rick. Bla Blaney has to fight so hard to come in here down 10 to the cut line. They're both aggressive, and Mark Trucks Jr. doesn't want to give up any positions, and that's why they're racing literally centimeters apart, maybe even less than that, as we've seen contact between these two. Yeah, Blaney would love to run the bottom at three and four, but he can because of this car right here we're riding on board with. Reddick with the Toyota Cam is taking away the line that the 12 prefers on the bottom of the racetrack. And what a great job by his crew chief putting on two tires. He was running 12th, and now sitting here running fourth with two to go. Here comes the surge out of the 19. He gets to the inside of the 12. Can he hold him off? Big push right here coming from Kyle Busch. Who is he going to help? Here comes the run. Wow. He almost thought about going <laughs> in the middle. Backs off a little bit. He's trying to help himself. Blaney moving around. The eight sliding up the racetrack into the left side of Denny Hamlin here off of turn two. Bush got so loose down there. It's the final lap of stage one. Again, the top 10 gained stage points. And it's going to be Kyle Larson who's going to get the win of stage one. Bell finishing up in second. Kozlowski, Reddick, Truex Jr. All gaining points. Blaney, Hamlin, Bush, Harvick, and Byron. The one playoff driver that didn't receive points was Chris Busher. He finishes 16th in stage one. Larson and Bell grabbing the most points, but it's Larson with a six stage win already this year in his third year at Las Vegas. Smiles all around. Neons are flashing. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Pods Moving and Storage, trusted with more than 6 million moves. IHOP, we're flipping up a new menu with waffles, biscuits, burgers, and more. And by South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, where the racers stay in Las Vegas. In the clutch moments, a lot of pressure comes to the table. Pressure can be good because it means that you're going for something pretty special. When there was doubt, I ate it up and I spit it out. I faced it all and I stood tall and did it my way. 
This race has been all Larson's way up to this point after he won stage one and has led 65 laps. Kim. And Tyler Reddick getting valuable stage points after a two tire call that last stop. This stop though, the call is gonna be four tires. He said, I about wrecked in one and two. I am shocked at how loose I still am. Crew Chief Billy Scott, Dave told him, we will tighten you up a bit more. Denny Hamlin grabbed four stage points, told his crew he's being a bit guarded for these tire issues here. Looks like he'll just get two and leave, Marty. Kyle Larson said the car is still too free, and I could tell in the long run that would not be good. Four fresh tires for him. Cliff Daniel said we'll keep chipping at it. Meanwhile, Christopher Bell, four fresh tires for him as well. He said the car is better. I can trust it a little bit more. And valuable stage points for Bell as well. He got nine in that stage, Rick. And I'm a little surprised the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. didn't come to pit road on this first opportunity. NASCAR Fantasy Live lets you keep tabs on your fantasy lineup throughout the race and allows you to adjust your picks until the end of stage two, which we're about to start. Visit NASCAR.com slash fantasy. You can select the fantasy icon on the mobile app leaderboard to make in-race changes. Okay, so the end of stage one, the top ten earned points, and here are the drivers that grab those points. Larson got ten. And you see all of the drivers in the top 10, with the exception of Bush and Harvick, are playoff drivers. So nine of, or excuse me, seven of the eight playoff drivers were able to grab points in stage one. And it was a hard fought battle between a couple drivers, the 19 and the 12. Yeah, down the back straightaway, three wide with the eight car, Kyle Bush, almost in contact. Kyle Bush thought about going three wide. He goes to the bottom of the racetrack here. Then almost more contact. 12. Just about hits the fence off of four. Dave. James Small, the crew chief, kept him out with this reasoning. If we can get the front row here, I think we're staying bottom. Okay. He's got the front row, Steve, but not a lot came with him. What do you think? Well, 10 laps. Came with everybody else. Yeah, 10 laps on his tires. I think James probably thought he would get a few to stay out behind him. You get three or four cars behind him, this might work. But unfortunately, with everyone behind him on fresh tires, 
Uh, I'm not sure this is going to be an overall benefit, but sometimes you got to gamble a little, Rick, trying to get your playoffs going the right way. A few two tire stops with around him, though, so that might give him a little bit of cushion. They did not get four. Denny Hamlin, two tires. Ty Gibbs, two tires. We'll see what happens. They fan out, and three and four wide as they enter turn one. Look at this restart. It's insane. Kyle Busch on the top of the racetrack. So far, so good for Martin Truex Jr. as he shoots out to the lead. I think they're so close to wide open that for the first two or three corners, Truex will be fine because wide open is wide open on new tires or old tires. But you see instantly the momentum of 11 of Denny Hamlin and the 6 of Brad. The 19 probably had to be out of the gas a little down there. And now how close will he be able to stay once these cars with the pressure tires are able to get by him if they're able to get by him. Side drafting from Kozlowski and Denny Hamlin. As they continue to fight for that second spot here for Chris Buescher in the 20. Jeff, I think you pointed it out, right? The two tires literally side by side with Brad and Hamlin kind of holding Bell at bay is just another advantage for Truex. So far, the gamble paying off for the 19 car. Yeah, two tires were not bad when they tried it the first time. People came down pit road under caution. Guys, that did two tires. It worked out pretty well for them. So they took off well. Now look, James Small is a smart guy, but he didn't know who was going to take two tires, but that did work out well for him. Well, now they're no longer side by side, so we'll see what Diddy can do. He's already closed right up to the back bumper of the 19. Drex is going to have to get defensive here, start looking in the mirror, start trying to take away the clean air from this 11. NASCAR is reviewing the restart and wanting to make sure that everything was fair. There's so much going on on that restart. I don't know why they want that task, but <laughs> here comes the five car on the inside of the 20. Christopher Bell, side by side, almost contact. Man, these guys race each other close and hard. Larson takes it, drives across the racetrack in front of the 20, now to the inside of the 54, Ty Gibbs. Chris Buescher looks on in that 17 car behind him. He goes three wide to the inside, down the back straightaway, a big move from the 17. Buescher with that momentum, tried to make the pass on the inside. We'll see if it was a good move. It clears the 54, and he's able to get by. Side by side up front for the lead, the 11 of Denny Hamlin used the top of the racetrack in three and four to create some momentum to go to the inside of the 19. So Hamlin out in front now, Truex falls to second. Restart violation, A.J. Allmendinger. So the winner of last week's race has a restart violation and does a pass through penalty that he's serving right now. Side by side for third, Larson trying to get around Keselowski at the top of the screen. Takes a short way around the front straightaway. They both run up on the back of this 19 of Truex. Truex starting to sh struggle a little bit on these old tires. Brad Keselowski trying to get to the top. He can do it down the back straightaway. He's got the momentum and the speed. Blending on the racetrack is A.J. Allmendinger. That's going to confuse things a bit here. That hurts Truex. Look at Truex struggling now. Truex falls back. Larson's able to get by him. So Larson's up to third. Kozlowski running second out in front, pulling away as Denny Hamlin has an eight-tenth of a second lead over Keslowski. And early in this stage, Martin Shrex Jr. continues to fall back. A strategy gamble. And now he's falling back to the fifth position. He's going to keep on dropping back that 20s now to his, his inside. This is a pretty serious situation for the 19 team right here in the middle of stage two. Yeah, I'm struggling. And you can hear in the radio. Yeah, you, can't wait here. you can hear Truex. He's like, guys, I don't know what to do. And with these older tires, we say it, the further you fall back, the worse your problems are. Here comes the 12 of Blaney. You'll have Byron, Gibbs, Reddick, all those cars closing up on this 19. Steve, why would they make that call? Why would they try to gamble and 
get that track position well, for just a couple laps. Well, because he doesn't know what everyone else is going to do. So listen, it's easy to say now it's a mistake. I didn't love it when everybody pitted behind him. He probably didn't love it when everybody pitted behind him. He probably assumed, he being James Small, if I stay out to get the front row, if I can get three or four cars to stay out behind me, then have a couple cars on two tires, he would still be out there leading the race. That's what makes pit strategy so difficult. Your call might not be the wrong one, if you know what everyone else is going to do. Now, at this point, it is going to be a battle. As soon as they're inside their pit window, probably 12 or 13 more laps, I would have to pit and just try to stop the bleeding. You can see the frustration. He just knows it isn't working. We heard A.J. Allmendinger was penalized. We don't have a great shot of it, but NASCAR has put a big emphasis on laying back to get an advantage. See the 16 car of Allmendinger. Look at the space to the 34. Earlier, we don't have a shot of it. Earlier, off of turn four, he laid back. He he got a car length and a car two car lengths between he and the guy in front of him. Laid back, got forward momentum, and then as soon as he got to the start finish line, jumped on the outside and made that move. NASCAR has over the last several weeks made some calls in the other two series, trucks and, and Xfinity, and they put a point of emphasis on not laying back, and that's why that call. How about Denny Hamlin finding his way to the front of this race as being probably, well, he was the worst qualifying playoff car. And then, I don't know, an average, he wasn't the worst playoff car, but he definitely wasn't as fast as the five and some of these other guys. But between great pit work and being super efficient. Yeah, him and both, Brad Kozlowski, were able to take that change in strategy on pit road to be able to get the track position and keep it. There's a confidence right now about Denny Hamlin as we see the 45 of Reddick getting by Kyle Busch and now Busch surging back on that inside line. But there's just a confidence, an air about Denny Hamlin this year. He, he kind of calls it his year. It's this is my year to win the championship. And he's gone out and done virtually everything he needed to do. And that's why I think there was a little bit of surprise in everyone when they weren't running well in practice yesterday and didn't have a good qualifying effort. But now that has all changed as he's out front in clean air and has a four tenth of a second lead over second place. Yeah, second place is tightening up with Larson closing in on the six car. And that's going to get busy for Hamlin. If the five can figure out a way around Brad Kozlowski, I think he drives right to the back bumper, the 11. And what's really important for everybody to understand the rules, we've got a better shot of the 16 car of A.J. Armendinger. Look how far he's laid back to Carson Josefer. Now he's coming. Now he's got forward momentum. When he gets to the far start finish line, he's going much faster than Josefer. That's why NASCAR does not like drivers to do that. And that's why there's rule against it. And that's why they made the call. Here comes the five of Larson. Now it has been an interesting season. Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin have raced one and two in multiple races this year. And it really kind of boiled to a point at Pocono earlier this year when Kyle Larson was out front. Denny Hamlin aggressively passed him on the inside. And Kyle Larson felt like Denny put him into the wall as they were going out of turn one. And so now we're getting to the clutch time of the season when everything matters. And Kyle Larson has said, well, I know how I'm going to race Denny Hamlin from here on out. Well, it's about ready to be a one and two battle between these two if Larson can clear the six. Denny Hamlin's out front in Vegas.
Big Ten Saturday night on NBC and Peacock. Michigan heads to East Lansing to face in state rival Michigan State. It's Wolverines versus Spartans. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Get ready for Saturday night. And the top three staying the same as Hamlin, Kozlowski, and Larson holding those three spots. And Larson has fallen back from Brad Kozlowski. Kozlowski had closed the gap just a bit on Denny Hamlin. I think when I get the lead, I won't need any turn. That was the five radio of Kyle Larson. Yeah, he's talking about how he's a little bit tight behind these cars. He feels like he won't need an adjustment, though. If he can get to the lead, the car balance should go to where he wants to be. Just good information for his team to sort of cipher through. Marty. What do you know down there? On the well, it's an, it's an interesting dilemma, you know, right, Steve? Because he keeps telling Cliff Daniels when I'm in traffic, it's one thing. But when I'm out front, it's another thing. So if you're Cliff Daniels and you know you've led 65 laps to this point and you probably have the fastest car, which way do you go? Because pit stops are coming up pretty quick. Well, I keep it good in clean air. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't think it's I, I know it doesn't drive like Larson wants in traffic. Dale, Jeff, you may disagree as a driver, but I'm not sure if I make a drive way better, it's going to help you pass the car in front of you. Like, yeah. I, I need to have the most potential in this race car it is and hope by good fortune, good luck, and a good restart, we end up with clean air at the end. Yeah, I think we talked about it, joke about it, where you can't change the direction of the wind, where you can't change dirty air. You oh, into the wall, the 42, Carson Hosevar. Could this be a right rear tire issue? Looks like his right rear tire is flat. And remember, this is the team car to the 43 who had the flat tire earlier. Tire. There you go. Blew a tire out of Hosovar's radio. So both of the Legacy Motor Club cars, Jimmy Johnson in attendance. This is not going to put a smile on his face as both the 42 and the 43 have both blown right rear tires in today's race. Looks like enough damage to the right side of this one. It might end his day. Uh, toe link damage possibly there on the right rear. And he's going to try to pull back into his pit stall if he can make it all the way around the racetrack but the right side tires both down on the 42 of Hosevar. it was announced earlier that he would be running the remaining races this year for legacy motor club right at the top of the racetrack in turn one and two and it's like he just he made contact with the wall maybe the tire is going down before he gets to the corner so he tried to keep it against the fence, maybe to slow the car down. So a bad, bad break for Carson Hosevar, but is this a good break for Martin Shrex Jr. who was <laughs> falling back? So, you know, I don't know. Um, if you pit under green and he pits early, I think he can kind of overcome some of his positions. He has good enough car. He's 16th. Maybe he would have come a little bit early and drove back up to 10th or 12th. Now everybody's going to come on pit road. There's the boss man of Legacy Motor Club, Jimmy Johnson. Mack uh, Kenseth this week. He was just brought on as a competition advisor to this team. He's here as well. So this team trying to step up, just bring more speed to the racetrack. You know, so back to the Truex conversation, I, I wonder if he didn't have more potential in a green flag cycle to gain spots. But if he was going to keep losing spots, Rick, I don't know. Let's hear what the 19 thinks about it. I almost didn't listen to you, but I'm not really very good at not doing that. You know, felt like it was really hard on the tires to restart. Yeah, you should have not listened clearly. We have no idea what we're doing. So <laughs> that had to be tongue in cheek, right? You know, these two have <laughs> the, the, a great relationship. And I sat down with James Small after the regular season championship was awarded and talked about that communication on the radio. And he, he said, listen, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but you guys in the media, there's James Small and, and people listening in. It sounds worse than it is. This is just how we communicate. My head explodes because that's just not my style. Uh, but these two have found it. But such a down year last year missing the playoffs come back to win the regular season then it's going to feel like deja vu not a top 15. they come here they have a great car uh, and then you hear james he's not making excuses yeah you should have not listened to me that was a bad call we don't know what we're doing down we here it's like okay doing. come on so you know at least they're a little lighthearted about it we'll see if, if this caution helps them one thing for sure though after what just happened in the 19 uh, I don't believe anyone you're, you're going to see stay on the racetrack right now. This will be an entire field coming to pit road inside the fuel window to the end of stage two. Well, fans, download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras and a radio broadcast. You can also upgrade to premium for access to driver audio channels where you can listen into what we just heard right there. 
Search NASCAR in your app store and you can start a free trial today. So with 52 to go in this stage, Steve, everybody's going to come. But will we see them try to stretch it potentially all the way to the end of the stage and maybe test those tires? Well, yeah, well, I think um, this is awful to say, but I think your tires either going to make it 30 laps or it isn't. Um, whether it goes 50 or 60 or 70, I don't think it makes a difference. I think you either have a tire that's going to fail or it isn't. And, and for that reason, I think everyone's going to pit now and run the final 50 laps to the end of the stage. Kim. And Chris Buescher complained that pit road is pretty slick today, so he'll look to stop a little bit short in his box. He said, I was way too free. It made him hard to move up a lane. They're going to take four fresh Goodyear tires on this stop after taking two the last stop, a drink of Sunoco fuel. Dave. Leader Danny Hamlin says, I need better security into turn one just before the bumps. Please don't hurt the exit. Four tires this time, Marty. Kyle Larson said the car is much better. The loose condition he's dealt with all day long, slowly going away on the five car. He said, if we get the lead, we will be really good. Christopher Bell took a while to get through traffic, but he said at the end of that run, car is so good. Brad Kozlowski and his team gained a spot here on pit road. Good stop for the six bunch, Rick. RFK Racing, very impressive for Brad's crew as he was able to get off pit road first. It was Carson Hosevar that had a right rear tire go down into the wall. He went. Well, the inaugural Brendan Gaughan Celebrity Blackjack Tournament was held Thursday night at the South Point Hotel Casino and Spa. The event raised $40,000 for Speedway Children's Charities. Among the participants were NASCAR Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace, along with current drivers Kevin Harvick, Chris Buescher, Ryan Priest, and Daniel Hemrick. Actually, Kevin Harvick was the celebrity winner, uh, earning over and winning over $40,000 in chips himself. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. South Point 400 from Las Vegas. You're burying the lead. I saw you in there. You didn't tell us how you did. <laughs> well, uh, I would say I was in the top half. If you'd have won, you'd have known about it. <laughs> That's what I wanted. To, That's what I was getting. At. There's probably a little truth in that. Marty, what about the five? 
Well, Rick Kyle Larson spent his week at rookie orientation for the Indianapolis 500, doing 200 miles an hour around the racetrack. I asked him this morning, did you have fun? He said, yeah, it's hard to not go as fast as I wanted to go. He said, lap five, I was ready to go wide open. So, Junior, you spent the last few years at the Indy 500. Were you at least tempted a little bit to get out on the track and make a lap like this? I think any race car driver would dream of doing what Kyle Larson did, to go out there and drive that car under those controlled conditions. Yeah, so while I was at a celebrity blackjack tournament, he was going over 200 miles an hour and having to hold back a little bit. Kyle Larson now will restart on the outside of row one. Keslowski with a hand out the window saying, come on, Christopher Bell, help me along here. They're not connected really well on the bottom. You see it on the outside. And here they come, the five of Larson, Denny Hamlin, even up with the six. Momentum should be on the top of the racetrack, but they're going to go down the back straightaway even. Again, better connection on the outside. Denny up the racetrack, loses a lot of speed off of turn four. Kozlowski again trying to side draft that five of Larson and hold on to this lead. He clears the five. He's got that top spot. Now on the high side, here comes Larson. He's not going to get there, Rick, off the of turn two. Keselowski to the lead clear. What a move by Brad. He got real aggressive, entered turn one, exceptionally low, still able to make it work. And what a great job by his pit crew getting him to lead since the playoffs have started. That team has had the second best pit stops. Great job in the playoffs. Denny Hamlin's trying to rebound. He has slipped back to fifth behind the 24 of Byron. Side by side, Kyle Busch, the 12 of Blaney. That sorts out. Logano able to win a year ago and go on to win the championship. Now falling back and is not a part of the playoffs this year. Redick off the top with a big push. To the back of the 22, Legato down the front straightaway. Now he tries to get to the outside here, way up the racetrack at one and two. Momentum paying off for Reddick as he pushes that 22 of Legato ahead. And now he'll go to the high line again, trying to get by him. This is his signature line here, man. He loves running against the wall. Oh, contact! Logano up the racetrack, got into the 45. He corrected. Riding on board with Redick. Looking out the back bumper. The 48 car. Let's take a look at what happened off a of turn four there. Just the 22 washing up the racetrack. Didn't give him enough room. Not enough room for a car out there. You can see the lift out of the gas from the 22. Fire coming out the pipes here. We're riding on board with Reddick during this situation. He closed his eyes for a minute. Just wasn't sure how that was going to work out for him. But he comes out the other side, and now he's trying to work to the outside of the 48. Here's Truex trying to work his way back through the pack. He's got Logano working the outside, and that's a fight for 13th right now between these two. Truex will take the spot back. Pretty calm out front still with Keselowski in the lead. Good racing back here in the pack. Fight for third as William Byron on the inside of Christopher Bell. Christopher must have had a bit of an issue down in turn one and two. Byron's trying to take advantage of it. Oh, oh man. Almost clears him. Marty. Boy, Junior, tip of the cap to Rudy Fugel. They have worked hard on this 24 car today, and it's coming to life here in stage two. But this battle continues. Jeff, Christopher Bell just said something interesting on the radio to a spotter, Stevie Reeves. He said, you got to tell me where he is. Is that because Bell doesn't want to look in the rearview mirror as the battle continues for this third spot? We see this tight battle. Christopher Bell maybe just wanted to know where he needed to go to block a little bit. Instead of using that mirror, instead of using that camera off the back of the car, wanting a little more information from the spotter. Guy out front is familiar 
with the view Brad Kozlowski has won here three times. And Larson now within a car length. Kim. And even though Brad no longer in the playoff picture, this team still felt like they had something to prove. They want to win before the end of the season. And in fact, they said winning a race, specifically this race, is the best thing they can do to help their teammate, Chris Buescher, because winning this race would keep a playoff driver from locking themselves into the championship four and totally change the complexion of the next two races in this round. We've continued to talk about it. If you win, you advance. But that doesn't mean that any of these eight playoff drivers will win. That would put four potential drivers to have to make it on point. So points very important. And Brad Keselowski of RFK Racing, he has a driver in this field with Chris Buescher. Yeah, Brad's on almost a 100 race winless streak. It's 94 right now, and he has come close. And he's driving his own car. Nothing would feel better than to go into victory lane driving his own race car. Down the back stretch he goes, and now putting a little distance between himself and second. Keselowski leading at Vegas. Hey, race fans, when in Las Vegas, stay where the racers stay. At the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, it's your ultimate pit stop on the Las Vegas Strip. South Point, everything you want all under one roof. Out in front, Brad Keselowski now has led 18 laps in this one. Larson, six-tenths of a second behind. Byron Bell, Hamlin on the top five, then it's Busher Blaney, Chastain, Kyle Busch, and Alex Bowman, the top 10, just outside the top 10, two playoff drivers in Mark Trux Jr. and Tyler Reddick. Busch trying to get by the one of Chastain. Chastain had a, remember he got a lap down earlier, he's fought back, done a really good job. He's in track position, it's a fast race car. He had a big run right there, and Kyle Busch blocked it. One and a half, one up. He's got pressure from the 48. Two and a half exits. Behind this trio, 
is the 19, so he loves seeing those guys run, run each other hard. It might give Truex an opportunity to close the gap just a little bit. Otherwise, you know, the tends to get a little bit spread out over the long run, and you may get a spot or two as Truex tries to climb his way back into the top 10. But as this stage continues, we get near the end, gaining multiple spots to be able to climb your way back into the top five, unlikely without a yellow flag. And Barney, what about the local star, Kyle Busch? Would love to get a second win here at Las Vegas in his hometown, as you mentioned, Rick. It's been fun to watch this back half of the top 10 battle between non-playoff drivers. Talked to Randall Burnett this morning, and he said, listen, we have a lot to prove still in these playoffs. So three wins that came early in the year. They came at racetracks kind of like Las Vegas, these bigger racetracks. And I feel like we can show something here and at Miami. Kyle said a moment ago, car, very good. Just need some track position and just a little bit too tight, Kim. Well, Ross Chastain running in the ninth position, and Jeff mentioned him being a lap down early. That was due to a speeding penalty during one of the first stops. Too fast entering. They were able to take the wave around. That car was good to begin with, and they've made it even better early in this run. Ross said it's the best it's been all day. He just said he's getting a little bit loose now after firing off tight, Dave. Another good run for Alex Bowman here at Vegas. Remember how the year started for him as he gets oh so close to Ross Chastain right there. He finished third here in the third race of the season. And at one point led the points early, but a back injury kept him from was one of the things that kept him out of races and without a win did not make the playoffs. Trying to make some noise here before the end of the year. Here's a battle right here, the 12 car Blaney getting by Busher. Busher up to the top of the racetrack, trying to find some speed as the balance goes away on this 17 Ford. Remember, Busher did not get any stage points in the first stage. But it's seventh right now, and needs to fight hard to, kind of try to try to get some here. Truex finally catching a few cars to be able to take some spots away, passing the one of Chastain. The next car in front of him is going to be Bowman and then Bush. Opportunity maybe to run those guys down in this 19 car. And that puts Mark Truex Jr. back up into the top 10, which he had fallen back, was running in the teens. But now maybe that missed call of the strategy for the 19 team is working out as he fights back into the top 10. Kozlowski now with a 2.5 second lead over five here. Byron. And yeah, the five of Larson has slowed down. I wonder if this is another issue. I need the wall. A little bit, yes. There you go, Rick. He said he hit the wall a little bit, and Cliff Daniels said it does not look terrible on TV. So obviously, 24 to go here the in the stage, Steve. They're going to keep him out. They're not going to make him pit here. Yeah, he's struggling with the balance of the car right there. You see the car bobbling in the middle of the corner, but here's the. Oh, he. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> that was oh, massive. Goodness. So the car almost spins out. He does a, a really incredible thing and basically just locks all four tires down. And that, that's kind of that in the wall straight the car, the car out. Fine. I saw the replay where his wall is just going to be tire heat at this point. Stay smooth. So the, the tires, the heat in the tires and also the potential flat spot, those tires. He's probably he's probably fighting against a little bit of that right now. But luckily, I believe he he avoided any kind of issue with bending a toe link and also the body damage, I don't believe. But look at that. Yeah. Apparently, he's really upset these tires. How much longer can he hang on here? Just drove tons of heat into him. You know, when you slide like that, can you imagine how much heat is going to the rear tires? And it's going to take a while to recover from that. Watch this. Kyle Larson, the wall actually saves him. He's right. in the gas hard. Car comes around right rear, and he does a great job right there of not overcorrecting. Keeps the wheels straight, doesn't turn away to the left, locks the tires down. Most drivers would have turned to the right. The front would have turned around and smacked the wall and damaged the front. Kyle Larson did not let that happen. And remember, he was the Xfinity fastest lap earlier at over 183 Oh, we got another power. car on the wall, the 48. And this time it's Bowman. Oh, and he's going to slide her. back in front of Dang, traffic. Down, the caution has come out. Man, that was almost a bad deal right there. The car started to turn right, Rick, in front of oncoming traffic. He's running ninth. 
Guys, three laps ago, Alex Bowman radioed to his team that the right rear started feeling kind of funny. It was uh, not like it was earlier in the run, so oh. something was going on. Yeah, he's damaged the car. Now yeah. he has no steering. Yeah, the right rear tire's not flat, so I don't know whether he... He looks like he may have gotten out of control or out of, you know, loose, much like his teammate did. Maybe he was having a vibration or an issue with the right rear. But it looks like he's got a, you know, he's gotten the car sideways and up into the fence, much like Larson. I can't tell if the right rear has air, if it's off the yeah. ground or if it's bent up. It There's so the much ground. damage. It's weird, but it's obvious, you know, to your point, Junior, it's not you know, torn up and off the wheel. I have to wait. A little more information a on lot this happening one. right there. Yeah, like, absolutely. It, it, and is it a coincidence that that happened within two or three laps of his teammate? I mean, that's a that's probably a coincidence, but does it show a trend of handling as this racetrack is starting to change? Well, 28 laps on that run. I mean, that is right on the number for right rear issues. I think the man that knows is this guy. He's looking at that right rear like he knows something was going on. Yeah, exactly. We're about to learn. He'll climb into the AMR safety vehicle. They'll take him back to the infield care center. Well, he'll get, he'll, he'll get checked out. Uh, but an issue with the 48 has brought the caution out now for the fourth time today at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And I think the answer here, even though you don't have as many tires as you wish you did, after seeing what happened in the 19, I think everybody's going to come in. I think two tires is probably still an option. We've seen that some today. But at least two cold good years, Kim. And a big debate between crew chief Matt McCall and driver Brad Keselowski. Matt said we have three sets of stickers, one set of scuffs, 20 to go. What do you think? Brad said scuffs on the right side. So it is scuffs on the rights for Brad, Dave. Denny Hamlin said it was a lot more consistent through turns one and two than the time before. Same scenario as last time, according to the crew chief. A little bit tight at the end there. He'll take four, Marty. Just two tires for William Byron, right sides only. I said, he said, I need more security on entry for Byron. Brad Kozlowski will win the race on pit road. Christopher Bell said, I need to be much freer for a short run here. And yes, team's getting a little bit concerned about tire count down here on pit road. Crew continues to do a great job for Kozlowski. He wins the race off pit road.
NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Sonic. Mm. Sonic. Sonic. Credit One Bank, a credit card company. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Appreciate the help on that there, fellas. And beautiful scenery here around the racetrack. Not so great for Alex Bowman, though, as we take a look at what happened. Yeah, Alex Bowman, see the right rear come around on it, and he does overcorrect the car. Pounds the right front. Say hi. This was Say after hi. the fact. Go high, go high, go high. A lot, of, a lot of drivers make that mistake with this car. They, the back end starts to come around, and they turn the wheel. They feel like it's just a little bit to the right, but then it catches and just slings the car to the right. Equally unfortunate is his teammate did that just a few laps before. Was able to get get away from there without, without much damage. So tough situation for for Bowman. And now that the five car has been able to come to pit road, change tires, see how competitive he remains after having that almost near spin off a of turn two in contact with the wall. So as they re-lined up, Keselowski, Byron, Bush, Logano, Harvick all changed just two, two right side tires. And then behind them, Larson, Bell, Hamlin, Blaney, Busher, Truex. All those drivers have four fresh Goodyear tires. We'll see which works out best. 17, it'll be 16 to go after the restart. Keselowski and Byron. Keselowski takes the inside lane. Byron on the outside. Kozlowski down on the apron trying to have an advantage as they go to one. Look at Larson trying to sneak around that top. Can't qu quite get there. He's going to push Kyle Busch down the back straight away. Kevin Harvick trying to get three wide. Real close call there as he had to get out of the gas. Now we're three wide there, Rick, for third place. Oh. No. Makes it work as he goes by the eight. Now here comes the eight. He side drafted him. He pulled the five back. And they're three wide in front of the entire field. Great battle still brewing between the top two. Byron not giving up on that outside. Now the momentum has him in front, but Keslowski fight backs on the inside. And Keslowski surging ahead. Here comes Larson in the five. He'll take third away. On the outside line. Christopher Bell gets on the outside as well. He's going to try to go to the outside. That 22 can't quite get there. Ross Chastain, remember the speeding penalty? Ross Chastain up here fighting in the seventh spot. And still moving forward as is Hamlin. Chastain tries to drive down in front of the eight to take away his line. Side by side for second, the five car. Looks like this car is just fine after a little bit of contact with the wall off turn two earlier. Larson going for second, and he's clear. Larson's on four tires here. All these other guys are on two. We'll see if Larson can reel in Kozlowski. He couldn't do it before the caution with now about 12 laps to go in this stage, the Chastain. second stage. Yes, yeah, sorry, Rick. Chastain's drove around the 20, now drove around the 22. He's on the run, trying to catch this 24 Byron for third place. Christopher Bell now to the inside, Logano. Logano's going to get that spot away. Larson with momentum, closing the gap on Keselowski. Again, points to be paid at the end of stage two. And if you have a fantasy lineup and you need to make a change, you need to do that before the end of stage two. Kozlowski all the way down to the apron, trying to stay in front of the five, but here comes Larson. He looks to the inside. He's gonna draw even. Brad's gonna try to side draft just a little bit here. It's not quite hard. as... Yeah, it's gonna be hard to make this, hold him off though. The four tires are just better. Yeah. He didn't get aggressive with a side draft, assuming, I, th I guess, that the five was just going to take the spot. There's not much he could do about it. Tight battling right there back in the pack. Sorting out positions. Blandy cuts the nose off of the 17 down into one. 
Bleeding. That's going to cost him another spot. Look how it hurt the 17's momentum down the back straight away. Lost one spot. Reddit goes by. Denny Hamlin on the move as well. Marty, how about uh, the driver of the 48? Yeah, good to see Alex Bowman out of the infield care center. So was that the car getting loose or a tire going down, Alex? Yeah, I don't I don't really know one way or the other for sure. Um, we were really tight before that, so I want to say it was a, a slow leak on a tire or something. Like two laps prior to that, it had all of a sudden swung a little loose, and then when I entered, I just didn't even have a chance to save it. So um, I hate that for everybody at Hendrick Motorsports and our whole Ally 48 team. Obviously, we had a really fast Chevy Camaro, and um, our teammates are really fast as well, and just, I don't know, I'm not really a guy that spins out by myself, but uh, maybe it just got away from me. It's hard to say without uh, looking at the car yet, but um, yeah, bummer, and then the steering was broke. Glad that nobody hit me, because I was trying to go straight down the front straightaway with a wreck race car that didn't want to go straight, so um, hate that for all the guys, but uh, it's the way it goes sometimes. Well, Rick, until then, they had a very, very solid run going. Yeah, competitive for the 48 team, and Bowman. Uh, once again, trying to finish out the season with a win. Hasn't been able to get to victory lane in 2023. Ross Chastain has drove by all of these cars right here in the second place. This one car is flying. And there's the gap to Larson, who's leading the race. Really impressed. I know the one's got four tires, but he's drove through the field better than anyone else with four tires. We haven't seen this speed out of the one car at any point during the day but he's been a little bit quicker than Larson the last lap or two. See the drivers gaining ground. Nine positions for Larson versus for Chastain and seven spots for Ty Gibbs. Kim. Remember, Ross Chastain has led over 150 laps over the last three Vegas races. And when I checked in with the team this morning, the mood was upbeat. They were very confident about the pace they had in the car. They just said it was a little tight yesterday in practice. They told me they felt like they have all the pieces today to put together a win for Ross. He's flying right now. And if there's one person that doesn't care about playoff drivers in this field, I'd say Ross is on that list. He looked good in practice. But then, like you said, Dale, the race looked much kind of normal. Yeah. 20 car, Christopher Bell on four tires trying to drive through the field. He takes a spot away from the 24 Byron and now tries to close in on Keselowski right in front of him in that six car. There's the two of Austin Sendrick going by the 19 of Mark Trex Jr. And with the momentum, they'll try to get by Ryan Priest in the 41. Well, he's got, he's, Truex is all the way back in 20th. He restarted 11th. And, you know, he just had a bad restart and he's falling backwards. Four to go in this stage. He is not going to get stage points. The other driver in the playoffs, it is not in position and he did not get any in stage one either is Chris Busher. Chris Busher, he's back in 15th. Yeah, Martin Trux Jr. continuing to drop back as Michael McDowell in the 34 got to his back bumper. Yeah, Truex doesn't have a top 15 in the playoffs yet. That's unbelievable. And we saw at the start of the day, things were looking great. One small misjudgment or miscalculation on a, on a strategy car or a pit stop has really set this team behind. And that's just how competitive the rest of this field is. You can't give up even an inch. And it's been difficult for them to rebound. Under three laps to go, coming up on two as we see Hamlin now working his way past Kozlowski. That is for the fourth spot. Yeah, Denny's gotten by the 24, now trying to get out of the six as well. These are great spots to be obtained for this 11 team. Be able to close out the end of this stage. Hamlin clears the six. Final lap of stage two. Larson with a 1.4 second advantage over Ross Chastain. Christopher Bell and Denny Hamlin have worked their way up inside the top five, running third and fourth. Kozlowski has fallen back to that fifth spot. Again, the fresher Goodyear tires have paid off for Larson, Chastain, Bell, and Hamlin. And stage number two is going to go. Kyle Larson, he swept the stages today. It's the ninth time that he has swept those stages in a race.
playoff drivers also gaining points. William Byron, you see Ryan Blaney, Tyler Reddick, as well as Bell and Hamlin. Las Vegas, track completed in 1996, has seen a lot of action at this race track. The city of entertainment, most recently last year, the dust up between Larson and Wallace. Who's going to get to victory lane? Two stages complete. Well, it was a big day here in the wedding capital of the world, especially for Tori Lindsay and Nick Brendel. A couple tied the knot today at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It actually happened during a Kevin Harvick pit stop where the Bushlight contest winners exchanged vows in under 15 seconds right beside the number four car. Uh, this Bush Light wedding even had the Bush guy serve as the ordained minister. Also, you might not have known this. <laughs> there they are. Did you know Kevin Harvick was married in Vegas too? How about that? Congratulations to Tori and Nick. Time to enjoy a few ice cold bush lights. I believe they're in the suites right now here. Enjoying those and the rest of the race. Now, if he could have married them and finished an ice cold bush light during the pit stop. I'll bet he said bush. That's impressive. I That's love impressive. somewhere. I love there. the length of that ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds. Here they come, man. These guys won't be on pit road that long, at least not in their pit stalls, Kim. And for Tyler Reddick, he said it was still tight entry and center, but freeze up on exit, continuing to have tire chatter. They used some code words to determine on th this race call. So we'll see what it's going to be for tires, Dave. Eddie Hamlin said it was better in turns one and two, so keep going that direction. Uh, he just wants four tires and uh, fuel full, Marty. Dave, 20 valuable stage points in the bank for Kyle Larson, said the car is still too free and actually worse than it was the last run. Chris from it he felt like the car wasn't bad, but early on, way too harsh through the bumps. And a drag race on pit road. I think Bell may have won it. He did indeed, but that was by inches over Ross Chastain, Rick. Grabbed a couple spots for Bell. Chastain stays in his spot. Larson loses a couple off of pit road.
tonight Sunday night football the New York Giants are in Buffalo they're facing Josh Allen and the Bills that coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern with football night in America on NBC and Peacock remember starting quarterback for the Giants Daniel Jones out with a neck injury. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs South Point 400 from Las Vegas. I know a lot of people are thinking the Giants Bills game is a, is a shoe in for the Bills but just Let's go on record to say that the Browns beat the 49ers today. So we're getting to that point in the season where it's very hard to predict. Never know. Maybe another backup quarterback. I was going to say, you yeah, okay with a backup quarterback hey, leading the Giants? I'm just saying. You want to tune in. Take a look at the points today as they've earned through two stages. Larson winning both has 20 points. Then it's Bell. Hamlin grabbed 11. Reddick nine, Blaney eight, Byron and Truex Jr. six each. Kim. And despite the confidence that the 45 team of Tyler Reddick had this morning when I talked to him, we really haven't seen that on track today, and that's because the balance of Tyler's car hasn't been to his liking. He said now he's driving it less like a loose race car since it's taken that swing. They told him to make his straightaways a little bit longer. Dave. Kim Martin Truex Jr. and crew chief James Small took this uh, caution to talk about the race car. It's going both directions. Martin's very frustrated, won't handle in traffic, Marty. Dave Kyle Larson say was so impressive, but is Cliff Daniels thinking that the damage they had, which was very minimal, is affecting the handling of the car? Listen. Wall contact we had pushed it in the right rear tail thumb, took away some rear side force. I would assume that's why, you know, we kind of have what we have right now. Just thinking about why that run was so loose. So, Steve, would that make sense to you? That wall contact wasn't big, but it could be affecting the car. Well, I, you know, Cliff Daniel knows these cars as well as anyone, so if he feels there's a chance it could, I think he knows what he's doing. The bright side, if that's the damage, Rick, because that car could have easily been jumped. It could have been a replay of other guys' issues in the playoffs, but they still have a chance, even if the car has slight damage. Could be the best save of the year as we get ready for the final stage, and they're back underway. Not a great launch for that outside line. The 20's clear. Christopher Bell down into turn one. Take whatever he wants off of turn two here. Three wide down the back stretch. Nellis Speedway. That back stretch just off of Nellis Air Force Base as second place is Ross Chastain. Brad Keselowski's got third wrapped up. Kyle Larson back up to fourth. And now the fight for fifth as Denny Hamlin works to the inside of Kyle Busch back there also. Chastain's firing off strong right here as he's going after the lead in the 20 car of Chris Vermeil. is going to have to defend down here in three and four as we watch Denny Hamlin. Now we're on the leaders. Chastain in the middle of the racetrack looking for some clean air. Does that give him forward momentum on this front straightaway? It does a little bit. Not enough to pull alongside, though. Impressive how quick that car is. Bell running right up in the middle, and that says to Chastain, if you want to go above me, you got to go up near the wall. He uses that momentum. Let's see if it works out for him down the back stretch. That's exactly what Christopher Bell did, Rick, is he went to the middle of the racetrack to take that middle lane away from Ross Chastain in one and two, back to the bottom in three and four. Here comes the momentum again. Chastain all the way to the back bumper. Now he looks to the inside. Which line will he take in one? He goes high again. And Bell stays right in the middle of the track. Ross even higher. Just a little bit offset. And the six almost gets in the fence off of two, making a run on the bottom of the racetrack. Brad's right there, though. If these two get to racing, slowing each other down, that's great for the six car. Closing in, three-car battle here for the lead as Bell right now has a slight advantage over Chastain. Down this to time, the bottom. Yeah, Chastain goes low, but drifts up the racetrack into the middle of the track. Oh, you have to jump out of the gas right there as he gets the arrow tight. If you get right in the tire tracks of the lead car, you're in big trouble. That's what happened. And Truex here in a tight battle. He's all the way back, still in 19th. Racing with Briscoe. Here he goes, off turn four the last time, right against the wall. He is using all of the racetrack. Almost makes contact with it. Christopher Bell's trying to extend that lead as Brad Keselowski closes in on the one of Chastain. 
ran to the top of the racetrack. There you see Larson running the bottom. Race going quick is 177 laps complete, only 90 remaining. Bell pulling away with a six tenth of a second lead over Chastain. Then it's Keslowski. And coming into the picture now is Kyle Larson running that middle line. Larson might have an opportunity here because Brad ran the bottom. Same line as the one car. So here's the five to the inside. Almost to the quarter panel now. Down in the corner. This is going to be a tough spot for the six car. But he's able to survive it. Larson was able to go through those bumps on the inside. Yeah, if Larson can get to the left rear quarter panel, that really affects the six car in a bad way. Makes the six car really tight. Have to get out of the gas. Wasn't able to do it. Brad survives, tries to go back and take the fight to the one car of Chastain. Already this race has had more lead changes than the whole race in the spring. This will bell out right now by almost a second. You can see Truex still fighting hard back here, trying to get back toward the front. They lost that track position. And it has just been a struggle trying to get it back. Also, Chris Buescher back here. Chris, so far in today's race has been the loser. You know, no stage points whatsoever. Dave. Well, Jeff, I think it was Junior in pre-race who said the uh, championship run for Truex has to start here today. This is a track he's had success at, and it just hasn't come to them today. Again, like I reported uh, just before they went green, the car will plow, and then the car will be very loose, as you saw, off the exit of four. It just doesn't handle well when he's back here, maybe when he's up front like he was early in the race, but after that strategy call, it's been nothing but traffic for him. And it's so frustrating back here. I mean, it is a dogfight. When you lose that track position, all these guys racing hard. It's, we talked about it earlier, Junior. All, you know, you see the 14 car of Briscoe. He has not had the year that he wanted to have, and he's trying to turn it around. So he's gonna fight you hard. This Ooh. will be one of the hardest races you have all day. Truex tried to get in behind that 14, and I'm not sure there was enough room for him to do that. The 17 is gonna try to take it three wide right here. That'll be tough to do. The tricks finally, almost now, finally clear of the 14. One car at a time, that's all you can do. 85 laps to go. There's no more stage points on the table the rest of the day. Forget all that. Just try to do the best you can in catching each car in a smart way. Running offline, trying to stay in clean air. He's already right to the back bumper of the 41 car, Priest. Already with an opportunity to try to pass another car. He goes to the top of the racetrack. Gives up a ton of time right there, and the momentum's just not there off the corner to be able to make it up. 19 back battling in the 19th position. Let's listen to the radio and their frustration. Copy. So the general trend all day is just too tight to fire on restart. Yeah, no, that's what I said, but this last one, I was out of control and tight. Yeah, I copy that. So follow track position yourself. What happened? And while that you know, communication, I actually like that James is very calm and he's deliberate. I'm okay that Truex is fired up. I'd be more concerned that Truex is okay. If he's okay with losing his track position, is he okay with this race slowly slipping away? That's when you have to be concerned. But the fire in the driver, each and every year, conversation, is Truex coming back? Is Truex coming back? We got an early announcement this year that he's returning. And that radio right there proves to me that Truex has every bit of desire to run well as he's always had in his career. James Small trying to stay calm, keeping his calmer, his driver as calm as possible. Trying to win another championship. He's a part of the round of eight, but right now the furthest back in the field running 19th. Bell out front here at Vegas.
Ross Chastain is hungry here in Las Vegas as he's closed the gap on Christopher Bell and now Bell. Let's see if he can hold him off the little bit of momentum coming off of turn four. Which line will Chastain take this time? Doesn't look like he wants the bottom. Christopher Bell is trying to give it to him, but he doesn't want to. Oh, the one way up the racetrack gets into dirty stuff. Here comes Brad Kozlowski. Going to try to clean them tires off on that one car down the back straightaway. All that work for Ross Chastain to get to the back bumper of the 20 and then almost into the wall in turn one. And he's got to tighten the belts up and go after him again. Yeah, he's going to regroup here. The one the, you know, there. I'll get focused for the one one at the top of the racetrack. Christopher Bell's like, look, you can go low. I'll, I'll give you that all day long. And they went off into turn one and Christopher Bell went to the third groove. The one went even higher into the dirt. Now we're side by side for third here. Can Larson make the pass? Brad wants to stay right there on that quarter panel, side by side, off a of turn four. He's going to do it. Man, that's tight. The momentum carries him back in front of the five. So frustrating for Larson on the bottom of the racetrack. Denny Hamlin closing in on all of this. Chastain starting to run Bell back down a little bit. How much is Bell mirror racing now as this happened the last time they went through turn one? See, he just got way too high. Entered to trying to be on the outside of the 20 of Bell, looking for clean air. Bell entered a little bit higher than Ross anticipated. That put the right sides in the dirty stuff. Ross lost control, got it through all. Did a good job of not hitting the wall, actually. Haven't really seen many people running that high and wanted to. So Bell has the lead in about four tenths of a second. Let's. Have a look at the keys to victory lane brought to you by Ruoff Mortgage. Well, green flag pit stop. They can't run this final stage on fuel. I expect pit stops between about lap 208 and 215. Points versus win. We talk about the challenges for drivers. How aggressive are you to try to get that win versus making sure you get points? Still a lot of decisions that have to be made with 72 laps to go. And on that final pit stop, we're gonna get some final adjustments. Can anybody find out what they did to Ross Chastain's car? That's what I want on that final pit stop. Chastain's car has come to life here as he once again will try to reel in that 20 of Christopher Bell. Take another shot at him. Last time Bell went way up the racetrack, knowing that Chastain is wanting that higher line. So I asked before. Is he looking out the mirror when he goes into these turns when he's that close? Well, I think with this new digital mirror, it's so much easier for the drivers to pay attention to that while still watching what they're doing out the front of the race car. So look at this car sliding around. The great shots right there, being able to see the car move around. And he's starting to kind of maintain this gap to the one car. So he's probably not watching it so much right now. But if that one car gets bigger in that mirror, he's going to start paying attention to where that one's running. And I bet you know, he's going to assume that the one's going to run high. That's where he's been catching him. That's where he wants to pass him. So as long as he runs that third groove and tries to muddy up that air in that outer line, that should keep this one car where he is, Dave. On the lower left, you see the points as they run that now. And Blaney, who started minus 10, is now minus 22. Not the raw speed today they need. And that's about how they've run at the mile and a half tracks. When I told Crew Chief Jonathan Hassler that they have the fourth most points earned at mile and a half this season, he said, I'm surprised, but it's not been on raw speed. It's been on how we strategize the race. He's running six right now, Marty. Dave, a moment ago, that screen on the left hand side showed William Byron plus 16. He's lost three spots in the last 15 laps or so. What's going on? Here's what he had to say on the radio. It's about as fast as I can go without slipping the right rear tire. Copy that. All good, man. Staying locked in, doing what you can. So William Byron really struggling with the handling of the car, way too free, and really Kim just trying to protect that right rear and conveying that to Rudy Fugel. Well, as we look at that playoff picture and the points, Chris Buescher currently minus 35. He came in here only minus three. Track position has been their detriment today for a couple different reasons. They made a bad early call on strategy, and then the last run he took four scuffs that made him drop through the field. But then their biggest problem has been pit stops. At least three. Three of their pit stops today have been excessively slow. They have gained nothing on pit road. So Chris Butcher currently finds himself in the 18th position. 
Watching this battle right here between Brad Kozlowski and Larson. And I'm, oh, the one car up the racetrack again. And he lost a ton of momentum. What's going on with this one? Can he regroup? Is there a problem? He got up out of the groove again. Yep, looks like he's going to be fine. Let's take a look. Follows the 20 into the corner. It's loose. Back in, trying to come around. He chased the car up the racetrack. And now, right here, second through sixth. Look how tight this is between these positions. Incredible racing here. Kozlowski has that second spot. Larson, Chastain, Hamlin, Blaney, and Byron all there chasing Bell out front. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver update. Bell out in front. Hamlin has been fighting here with Ross Chastain for quite some time, running in that sixth spot. Reddick back there in 11th. Rookie Ty Gibbs in 10th. Bubba Wallace back in 13th. So we're in an awkward spot in the race because this stage is just a little bit longer. Early they were able to come, you know, a chunk before halfway and gain some track position. Remember earlier we saw uh, Bell and Larson, you know, Bell continued to run. Larson came early and jumped in front of him. So the aggressive side of pitting is about lap 210. Two more laps here. You, then you'd have to run, and you'd have to run about 40 on this set of tires, and, you know, 57-ish, 56 on the next set of tires. I think they would like to run a little longer than that, but if you are, say, Keslowski, a non-playoff car, Chastain, a non-playoff car, I would come early. I would gamble for the win. About two laps from now, I'd come on pit road, and I would force every other playoff crew chief to decide, Marty, how much they're willing to gamble in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's the crew chief perspective. I want to hear from Burton and Junior on what it's like behind the wheel. Oh, we got a crash in two. Sorry, Marty. We got a car spinning around. It's Chase Briscoe in the 14, goes around, and it looks like everyone's going to avoid. You see the right rear tire is down. Don't know if that was the cause of this spin. The right front also is down. Yeah, Chase Briscoe running 25th. Got way up the racetrack. It's a car underneath him. 
he might have four flat tires here as he's going to work his way back to pit road. Right rear is definitely down. Right rear, right front, both are down as Briscoe's going to make his way back or at least try to. And Steve, right at a time where you were talking about it being a very strange place. Here we go. As far as Scar's uh, pits go, here he is just way up the racetrack trying to get on the outside of Amendinger. Got in the wall and then contact also. He gets into Stenhouse there and Stenhouse goes up and makes a little contact with the wall. And luckily, as he comes down the track, not a lot of oncoming traffic really to have to worry about. And we talk about the battle, you know, back in the field and that shows you right there. I mean, they're racing for 23rd, 24th place. It's just, it is, this is a, an exceptionally competitive series these guys were only running like a tenth of a second, two tenths of the of the leaders, right? And that's how competitive it gets stretched out on a restart, and everybody is so close on speed. Here comes Briscoe. He's going to come on to pit road. Pit road's closed, but it doesn't matter. He's got to get the tires changed on the 14. Uh, there was some damage to the 47. He got into the wall as well. We saw a little bit of right side damage. Not sure to what extent that will be, but Steve. This puts everybody into their window now. Everybody so. can make it from here on fuel. So for sure you're pitting. I think they have a couple sets left. So if you get another yellow, you might pit again. But you get an extra lap right here with pit road closed. You take your time. You know, really have a good conversation with your driver on what you need, both in the short run and the long run. This is that final adjustment we talked about a minute ago. Well, and this could be, this is where the spotlight gets shined so brightly on this cruise you cannot make a mistake we've seen the six team and brad kozlowski their crew uh, they have been wonderful today uh, and christopher bell who's out front expecting a great stop out of his team as well and again this is just the first race of the round of eights next week it's off to homestead miami this is miami the beaches the palm trees the green flag is in the air but at 180 miles per hour with your biggest rivals breathing down your neck and a championship on the line. It's no time to relax. Oh, we got trouble on the front straight away from the van! What do you say, fellas? He got hit! Can you handle the heat? Hell yeah, Miami, baby! The NASCAR playoffs continue at Miami on NBC. And we take a look at the points now as they run. And Bell out front, and then a 10-point gap between Hamlin and Truex Jr. So Martrex Jr., uh, who started above the cut line, now below. And Steve, you had pointed it out. It's not so much how many points you gain, but you don't want to lose points. And Busher has been kind of on the losing side today when it comes to gaining as many points as possible. Well, playoff drivers, some are running better than the other, but our worst one is 16th with so many cars in the lead lap. An issue on one of these final restarts could really set you behind. Kim. And for Tyler Reddick, he said it fires off OK, but then builds a little bit of a tick free. No major changes on that card. The call for tires, Snoko Fuel, Dave. Ryan Blaney stopping short. That's his move. It worked last time. He needs it to be just about a half a number tighter this run. Marty. Kyle Larson told Cliff Daniels, felt like that was the best we were on the long run all day long. Feel like I need a little bit more turn, especially if this is a run to the end of the race. Christopher Bell told Adam Stevens, I don't want any changes. We'll see if the pit crew can deliver. They got the lead last time. It's going to be a drag race off pit road, but they will lose a couple of spots this time for Christopher Bell. Big stop for the five team, Kyle Larson. That's how he won his championship a couple years back. Kozlowski holding his spot there. As you see just how close it was coming off pit road.
so many beautiful scenes around the Las Vegas area. Not only the lights of the Strip, but also the many things around the area. Hoover Dam, the mountains, the desert, salt flats, so many different things here that people can enjoy. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. South Point 400 from Las Vegas. That's been a topic of discussion there. The big sphere here in Las Vegas. And the pit stops, once again, very important, Jeff. Yeah, Christopher Bell came in with the lead. Remember, the crew, the, the, the pit crew changed. Listen to the 20 car. When he goes to leave, I feel like the pit crew has a pretty good stop. It wasn't great, but it was pretty good. But listen as the rear tires try to make traction. He just did not launch very well. Right there, the tires are spinning. The car's not going forward at the rate that you needed to go. So here you see driver time, just a little bit off. Pit time, just a little bit off. That is two spots. And that could be the difference between winning this race and not. And Jeff, if he was at Charlotte Motor Speedway or another mile and a half, the timing line is almost right in front of pit stall one. But here at Las Vegas, he still has to go a pretty good ways out of his box, making that issue even a bigger deal. Larson on the inside, Kozlowski on the outside, Great back flag. underway. A push from the 20 of Bell. We'll see if Larson can utilize that shove as he goes into turn one, and he's clear of the six. We're four wide right there in the third row. Byron way up the racetrack. Chastain in the middle. Denny. Denny backs out. Gets back to three wide. And it's still three and four wide behind these guys as well. Laney trying to get to the outside of the 11 car. Couldn't get there. Now three wide. Several rows deep getting into turn one. Momentum working this time for the one of Larson. Oh, we got a car in the wall off of turn two, the 54 car. Ty Gibbs into the wall, and the caution comes out. Looked like that car might either got loose or blew a right front tire. That was a... Blew a right front. There you go, blew a right front tire. Car just went straight into the fence. Oh, and oh. the wheel came off, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. So the car went straight into the wall. Looks like it's cut. So that's what happens, Rick. So if the wheel comes off, I was just making sure where that wheel ends up right there. It was getting closer to pit road. So what can happen? I don't know if, yeah, it's cut. So if the wheel comes loose, it, it kind of drags onto the brake caliper and cuts the wheel right in half four, now that it's aluminum wheel. A four ride right here, and the car just takes off up the racetrack. He ran over something right there. You see the car jump? He ran over the top of something, it looked like. The car hopped in the air. See, watch this car. Or this is a right front wheel issue. This is a Maybe. right front that's not tight. Boom. I think that's the right front wheel falling off. Yeah. Correct. Getting to the end of the snout. There yeah, you this, go. Yeah, I think this whole thing has started because it wasn't tight. How about this? It ended with the wheel coming off. So yeah. at some point. And the center still in the wheel is what I what I, I thought, right? Because the outside looks good. Yeah, the whole wheel comes off. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, so if the whole wheel came off, the, the, the nut could not be on it. There you go. this and there it comes yeah the center sections in the wheel yep yeah there's a great shot of it you're right yeah so that means the, the, the nut yeah the lug nut was not on exactly yeah and it's a right side stop so you know on the left side they could drop the jack and the car could leave and you you know maybe you were having a bit of an issue on the right side what we've seen time and time again and I feel confident it's probably what happened here on the 54 is one of two things either the car got dropped as the lug nut was tightening up and therefore it doesn't pull up tight enough. Or the second thing is you can actually get these wheels indexed a little funny and they're just sitting on that pin and you could tighten the wheel up against it and you don't even know that the thing isn't pushed all the way on, Marty. Steve, obvious from the replay, but I did confirm with the team, right front lug nut was not on for Ty Gibbs and frustrating because they had a top 10 run going. Another great run for Ty Gibbs and that team gonna have to push him back here and then bringing him back down pit road. But the damage doesn't seem that severe, actually. So I think the body work's not severe. I just don't know about the suspension. It's gonna been a busy day. We saw it start practice with issues and it carried on to the race, the 43 
of Eric Jones has a flat right rear tire, guys. It's the same as the nine and the 99 in practice, then his teammate. Yeah, Josevar has an issue getting into the wall right there. Ends up spinning the car around here. A lot of damage to the right rear, knocks him out of the race. 14 to Chase Briscoe in the wall, around he goes. And I thought the 54 blew a right front tire, but the wheel's actually coming off the car, so he goes into the wall right here. I like that. We're going to slide that one over a category yeah. that, you know, end result of a tire, but we're going to find the blame a little different. I think that's fair. Yeah, this is 54 car, Ty Gibbs. He, he's had a solid year. He really has. He's been in position to win some races, had a good run going today. I think it's going to, you know, keeping Ty as a young driver, keeping him focused is, is going to be the goal for these next three races and heading into next year. You've done a nice job. Some improvements can be made, but this team next year, I think, will be a threat to win some races. And after these repairs, they'll be held a couple laps because when the wheel comes off on the racetrack, it's a couple lap penalty this year. We'll be back for the restart. He's bound to die, it up and truck it. Are we going to do... Forty-seven laps remain, and this is the first race of the round of eight to determine if the playoff driver gets the win. They're locked into the championship four. We heard from Joey Logano mentioning how important he feels it is and what a benefit. You get a couple extra weeks to prepare for that Phoenix race. Larson right now out in front of the field. And Rick, sitting here, my anxiety is building. I'm sure the crew chiefs on pit road are doing the same thing. So much work went into the whole season. To make the playoffs you've made the playoffs you've got all the way to the round of eight you've had good days or bad days and now if you're larson you're in position bell in position byron all having good days i hate restarts i feel like there's so much out of my control as a crew chief marty rick william byron has dealt with a loose race car for most of the day especially on that last run but on the last stop rudy fugel took a massive swing at the car byron radioed after that very short run kim and said it's much better we'll see if byron can get a couple of spots and maybe sweep the year here in vegas well marty joey logano having a very solid day running into sixth position currently and paul wolf told me 
they historically have been so good at this racetrack, so their expectations are high despite not being great on intermediate tracks this year. They brought a similar setup to what they won with last year. First half of the race, Dave, they were tight. Now they're trending to the loose side. Talking about the round of eight earlier today, Chris Gabehart, Denny Hamlin's crew chief, told me it will take explosivity. Now, I don't know if that's really a word, but what he meant was it's all taken this round to get to the championship four. That's what Denny's going to have to do here. He's really good over precision, long 40 or 50 lap runs, but if we get the short cautions at the end, he's going to have to ramp up the explosivity. Word sounds good to me, Dave. I'd go with it. I mean, listen, I make up a word every once in a while. <laughs> well, really mean to, it gets your point across. Yeah. Explosivity is... Uh, uh, very descriptive as Larson has chosen that inside line once again. Keselowski will be on the outside. Larson will be getting a push from the 20 of Bell. And we'll see how hard Ross Chastain pushes the six of Keselowski. We haven't talked lane choice much today, guys. Is there a lane you prefer over there? I kind of like the outside, just having the momentum off turn two. Three non-playoff drivers in the top six. They will help determine who wins this race. Green flag. Back in there. Three wide once again, going into turn one. Larson easily clearing and pulling away from the field. We're four wide back there for row five. Down the back straightaway, still four wide. Blaney went to the bottom. He's going to lose a lot of spots here if he doesn't make something happen on the bottom of the racetrack here. Denny Hamlin going down to the apron, trying to get by that 22 of Logano. Kozlowski holding on to the second spot. Bell, Byron, Chastain, Reddick, all top six. Logano, Hamlin. Seventh and eighth. Denny to the top of the racetrack. Kyle Busch to the bottom. Chastain trying to get to the outside of William Byron. Still trying down the front straightaway. Trying to get this high draft to work. Can't quite get it done. Fighting for these positions inches apart. We saw earlier. Over 180 miles an hour, the average speed around this mile and a half. There's a big run by Denny Hamlin in the 11. We'll see if that momentum will pay off as he's been trying to get by the 22. Logano now he got side drafted by Bush. Yeah, Logano stalled that out in the middle of that corner, and that allowed Bush to get up here to the inside. Logano now trying to get around the 45 of Reddick on the bottom of the racetrack. Reddick. Pulls up even down the Nellis straightaway. So now what does Reddick do? He could go all the way to the bottom if he wants to. Runs the second lane. Here comes Kyle Busch trying to take advantage also of the 22. He able, he's able to go by. What a corner by the eight, Jeff. Yeah. He made that look smooth. I thought he might get stalled out. He rolled right by. Yeah, it makes me wonder about that 22. Boy, like Logano got a little bit slow right there. Hamlin hasn't been able to get by him. Hamlin's yeah. still running ninth. That's got to be frustrating, Rick, for Hamlin to watch all that go down and him not really be able to take an opportunity to get by any of those as we hear NASCAR's posting the nine car for a restart violation. Once again, that laying back that you talked about, Jeff. Yeah, this will be the second one of the day. They're kind of picking on the cars in the back half of the field. Don't see really any violations toward the front half. Playoff drivers all inside the top 14 right now with Larson leading, Bell running third, Byron's fourth, Reddick is seventh, Hamlin ninth, Blaney tenth, Shrooks Jr. is 12th, and Busher is 14th. The 19 car of Truex trying to get around the four of Harvick. Harvick's going to make it tough here on this outside. Runs him tight in one and two. Hey, you know, Truex has expressed his frustration today pretty vocally, but I think one of the reasons why, guys, is think about the number of times we've seen this 19 car, you know, start 30th, 32nd or a restart and drive up to the top five, top six. And it has been a struggle today. They just don't have the speed to do that. 
And this really goes back to the one decision to stay on the racetrack when everybody pitted and they lost the track position. It's, you know, these races, Jeff, you talk about the, you know, the level of competition, Jeff. Well, it's also one mistake to lose your track position on top of the pit box or one on a restart. And it may set even a 400 mile race. You just don't have time to recover. Yeah, we talk about restarts. Great battle going on here. Let's go look at the Chase Elliott penalty. There he is, he's a lap down now. See how far back he is to the car in front of him? He's done that to build that forward momentum to get to the start finish line to try to make a move. And NASCAR, again, have to has told the drivers, we are not going to let you lay back. If you do, we're going to penalize you. This is a point of emphasis, and they have made this call twice today. Look at the gap behind him. See how he moved out? He made that move to, to the outside, and that said the NASCAR, he did this to gain an advantage, and that's why the penalty. I don't 100% know that that's fair because it looks like they all checked up in front of him. However, he was laying back before the restart. And again, now Elliott is a lap down. He's the first car a lap down, running in the 32nd position. As we see Martin Shrex Jr. still trying to get by the four. The four is going to get a little shove there from the 17 of Busher. Doesn't help though, as Busher's going to go the high line while these two are battling side by side. Busher comes in and he might do a two for one. Great job right there by Tim Fiedel with a spot on the four car. Let Kevin know there's a guy coming on the outside. Truex is like, what do I got to do to get by these guys? But he's really, you know, racing on the bottom of the racetrack. It's hard to get around the cars at a track where the high line, the middle line have some speed. Look at that. They take the line away from Truex. He has to get up the racetrack. This car is just not comfortable anywhere but on the bottom. Get Truex back to 14th. Just in front of him, Kevin Harvick, uh, the guy he's been fighting with for so long. Let's take a look at the progressive telemetry riding along with Kevin. And watch the speed down the back straightaway right at 188 miles per hour, all the way off the gas, back to full throttle as soon as you can. This front straightaway, a little bit longer, speed will be a little bit higher, 192, watch the bumps. This car actually rides really well through the bumps, not much head movement from, from Kevin. Larson's in front. He's got a 1.9 second lead over Brad Keselowski. He won stage one and stage two and has led over 100 laps today.
in dominating fashion Kyle Larson now a two second lead over Brad Keselowski under 27 laps to go as we see Ty Gibbs slow on the racetrack as he's trying to get back to pit road it looks like the right front another issue. I'm not sure yeah, if right the damage that came loose and cut this tire. Uh, he'll make it safely back to pit road this time. Again, win and you advance in this round of eight if you're a playoff driver. And Larson is one of those. He has won a championship before. He's one of two that are fighting for their second title alongside Martin Trex Jr. Marty. Rick, let's go through the field with the playoff drivers and let's review Kyle Larson's day. Two stage wins, one of the best saves of the year, no doubt about it, and staring at max points if they can win. And this is the same exact path Kyle Larson took to the 2021 championship, winning the first race in the round of eight. Could they win it at Phoenix as well? Christopher Bell is in the third position and how hard are the NASCAR playoffs? Well, Bell came in eight below the cut line. He told me this week it is all about points in this round for us they have gained 17 stage points running third right now all of that and they're even on the cut line as you can see going into Miami next week if it finishes like it is right now and how about William Byron running really the best they have run all day long in the fourth position they have struggled with a very loose race car but that big swing Rudy Fugel took a moment ago really worked he might lose his spot to Kyle Busch but they are much better than they were earlier Kim Tyler Reddick currently running in the seventh position. Finally seems like they've got that car dialed in because for the first three quarters of this race, Reddick could not do anything he wanted. In fact, at one point, he even said he was struggling to understand the car, couldn't trust it. Right now, looking good. They've worked on that car all day. Dave, they've made no changes on that Toyota on the last stop. Ryan Blaney runs eighth and talked to the team earlier today. They told me that's the best they unloaded in practice and qualifying yesterday. Remember, he started 12th, trying to put together a solid day today at one of his uh, not so great tracks Las Vegas Motor Speedway Denny Hamlin this for him is a good track he's won once here but in the round of eight it's not his best track nine wins overall in the round of eight is better than any other driver one here but three at Homestead coming up and five at uh, the uh, Martinsville Speedway coming up as well trying to finish well here today here comes Martin Truex Jr. yeah back up to 11th he just radioed the crew and he said man I need this thing to stay green that means he likes what he's got and he likes his car of the long Long run versus cautions and short runs, Kim. Well, despite a strong qualifying effort, Chris Buescher has struggled with track position all day long. Right now, one of the best runs that we've seen from him today, currently slotted in the 12th position. The biggest problem of the day, for, for, though, for them, they have earned no stage points. Chris said right now he just can't keep it turning like he wants it. That's a great job taking a peek at the playoff drivers and so important to have success in this first race of the round of eight and how huge of an advantage it would be for the five team if they can get the win and start preparing for Phoenix two weeks ahead of time Chris, or any driver. Christopher Bale's finally gotten second place in the last couple laps has been a little quicker in this five car. He's got a second and a half to run this car down but that lap right there, two tenths faster, two whole tenths. That's quite a bit. Marty. And Junior, that's what Adam Stevens just told him. He told Christopher Bell, this is not over. You are faster than the five car. You've got 19 laps now to make it happen. Steve, you got to get your driver fired up, right? Because we just mentioned a moment ago, Bell's done everything they could today. They've gotten all these points, and they're still right at the cut line. That win would change everything. Well, and they know what history says. Winning this race increases your championship odds quite a bit. You do not want Larson to be the car that's guaranteed locked in. If you're Christopher Bell, you need to go up and try to steal that away as we see the 24 of William Byron still battling with the one of Chastain. Steve, one other thing I want to point out and hope we look at and don't see a problem, but it's been 37 laps now on these tires. Uh, are we getting to a number that maybe you're getting a little, maybe agitating the tires? I think at this point, it's all about if you made adjustments that should make it more aggressive or potentially hurt them as we see Truex going by the 22 of Logano. Right now, it's not really concerned about the tires. Now you're asking yourself 18 to go, 30 laps of the tires. If the caution comes out, is it two tires? What do we need? What's the balance? Truex is the fastest car on the racetrack, and, and 
says he doesn't want a yellow, but at this rate, with only 70 to go, he probably stands to maybe gain one more position. Would a late caution not give them the opportunity to put tires on this car and make a run and gain a few more spots? Maybe just doesn't love the car on new tires and is afraid of losing more spots on another restart. Yeah, that's what he's talked about all day. It's just he cannot, the car doesn't turn on restarts, but also it doesn't have rear grip. And it's hard to be aggressive and get done what you need to get done. But go back up to Larson here for a moment. Their pit crew stepped up. You know, they've been really good in the playoffs. The third best pit crew in the playoffs so far this year. And on a stop where it could determine a chance to win a championship, they stepped up and beat the 20 car and the six car out. So this race is a long way from over, but kudos to that pit crew. So you mentioned Larson and the successes that we have already seen in the 2023 season. How about championship finishes for the drivers who have won the first race of the round of eight? Again, we saw this in Countdown to Green earlier. Joey Logano in 2018 won the championship. Martrex Jr. in 2019. It's gone all the way the last five years. A little bit of traffic. Rick, a little bit of traffic. Four lap cars right here in front of this five car. Could be an opportunity for Christopher Bailey. He's a tenth quicker that last lap. So the five is going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. You know the 20 cars looking at that is the only opportunity, I think, for him to close the gap enough to be able to have a shot at the win. 1.3 seconds is the gap. Under 14 laps to go. Martin Shrex Jr., we mentioned he was running fast lap times, but even at two tenths of a second faster than Denny Hamlin, he was still over two seconds behind him. So it's difficult to grab another position uh, when you're that far back. Larson, after that last restart, shot out front. Was in front of Keselowski, but then Bell has passed him. So it's Larson and Bell running one and two, but still a 1.1 second gap. And another battle on the racetrack right here. This 12 car of Blaney is running down the 24 of Byron. Byron's kind of stuck in the wake of the one car Chastain. And so this is a giving Blaney an opportunity. Blaney's faster. I think he's got the better race car right here. Is Byron sort of struggling to get to the end of this race? Another opportunity for Blaney. He came in here minus 10. He needed an amazing day. Didn't quite have all that good of a you know stage one or a stage two. He's got some stage points. Eight today. But one more spot, one more point. Maybe getting two cars here late would be a great thing for this 12 car. With 12 laps left to go, remember the pass for the win has come in the final three laps here in each of the last three races. Always right some late race drama. Larson doesn't want any drama. As Larson still 1.3 seconds in front of second place Bell, Marty. Kyle Larkin, Larson working some lap traffic there. And I want to go back to that stat we showed a moment ago where the winner of this race has gone on to win three of the last six championships. And Steve, I want to know what that looks like at the race shop. Cliff Daniels and Kyle Larson have lived it before. And Cliff told me, hey, you don't stop working necessarily next week on Miami or in Martinsville in two weeks, but it just frees everything up to focus solely on Phoenix and say, hey, we need to get better there. What can we do to make our car maximum? at Phoenix. So what does that look like at the race shop when you win this first race in the round of eight? Well, it's like a football team coming off a bye. People are more rested, more focused. They understand what they have to do. As you said, Marty, you'll still go try to win Miami and try to win Martinsville. But that's kind of what you do on the weekends. From Monday until you get on the plane to go to that race, you are focused on Phoenix. It's going to be all about what is at stake in a few weeks when we head out west to the desert. There's a lot of things. You mentioned the word focus. Uh, Kyle Larson was focused on Thursday on an IndyCar test. He comes here and his focus turns solely to this race. And then we saw in race how focused he was when his car got sideways and he was able to correct that just barely tapping the wall. And now he's out in front by 1.1 seconds over Bell with under eight laps to go. See this battle for ninth, Truex trying his best to get by the 11 of Hamlin. Running right the bottom, Hamlin got tight right there. 
Carr did not roll the middle like he wanted to. Truex able to jump up in front of him. All over the back buffer. Again, those two are teammates in Joe Gibbs Racing. And Hamlin, when he goes up the racetrack, loses ground on Martin Trex Jr. Looks like Blaney's finally used up the good on the, the Menards Ford there to be able to try to catch that 24 pass. So laps wind down. May be able to cool it off, make another run, but he worked that car really hard. When he catch, catches the 24, he had to move up the racetrack. But that actually works the car a little bit harder in the front tires. Again, draws right to the back bumper again. Jeff, you threw out the statistic. The pass for the lead in the last three laps of the race. The gap now seven tenths of a second here comes from Larson to Bell. Blaney's got a good run right here. You go to the inside, he's driving down low. Right to the left rear quarter panel. Now we're going to be side by side with the 24 and a 12. 12 may clear here. He does. So Blaney's able to get ahead of Byron. He's running sixth now. That's a big deal. A point for the 12, a point loss for the 24 right here late in the race. Great job by Blaney and this 12 team. Five tenths of a second. Bell pushing it here at the end of the race. It's pretty interesting right here. A big run coming. And Larson on the bottom of the racetrack. That is a major difference in speed right there between these two. Larson at 31.48 the last lap. Bell 31.43. Five one hundredths of a second. The difference. And we'll see if Larson can keep that gap. It's still five tenths of a second. Bell is trying the high line right up against the wall. That's a big run off turn four. Will it be enough? Because there are enough laps left for him to keep trying that. Three to go. A little bit of concern for Larson, as I know there's only three laps, but there's traffic maybe 30, 40 cars ahead. You wonder at what point that air starts affecting Larson. I don't think he's going to lose his racing line. Gap continues to get shorter. Now it's under four tenths of a second as here comes the 20 of Bell. He's putting on a late charge. Larson and Bell separated by four tenths of a second, two laps to go. The different lines being run by Larson and Bell. Bell trying everything he can do to catch him. We saw the same thing in the first 30 laps of the race where Bell chased Larson down for the lead and retook it. Larson's car struggling just a little bit here. Here comes Bell. Bell moved. Bell wobbled just a little bit right there. Lost a little speed. Had a huge run. Bell right up against the wall. One lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. Larson with a three-tenth of a second lead. Bell. A final effort through one and two. Down the back stretch for the final time. Big gain right there by the 20 car. Through three and four for the final time. Now lap traffic coming into play. Bell on the high side. Larson's going to drift up in front of him. Does Bell have enough? It's Larson. Bumper. Bell. Hi, Larson. Hi, hi. Hi, Larson's going to win. Put your flag. What yeah. a finish by Kyle Larson. Good job. Larson advances to the championship four, but what an effort by the 20 of Christopher Bell. The momentum was there off of turn four for the 20. That was the T point if I've ever seen one. Proud of the team, proud of you, Kyle. Great job driving at the end. Good job, Tyler. You mentioned a team win. The pit stops got him out front. He was able to dictate the restart. And now that team is safely into the championship four. And looking for another championship. This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advance Auto Parts.
fourth win already in 2023. And really, you have to go back to the save. He was sideways off of turn number two, tagged the wall, and saved this car, and now goes on to win this race. You heard him say, that's a team win if it, we've ever had one, and pit crew stepped up, got him off pit road first. Kyle Larson pushing the car, got it out of control, did not overcorrect, as you just mentioned, Rick, and hit the right front. Those moments can be the difference between winning a championship and this guy right here and this team, they got a shot now. And oh so close for Christopher Bell as he has now climbed out of his car. Celebration's gonna continue for a while for Kyle Larson as he's working his way back to the finish line. Christopher Bell's gonna run that back in his head a thousand times this week wondering what he might have or could have done differently on the front straightaway. He had so much more momentum than the five. Had he been able to get to the left or the right and not have to come out of the gas, he cut this five car brake. Marty's down there with the winner here in Vegas. Welcome to the championship four, Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports. He told me this morning, I'm focused this round on no mistakes. It was a flawless no mistake day for the five team maximum points. And now the berth into the championship four, but a heck of a battle for these Vegas fans with Christopher Bell at the end of the race. Did the 20 kind of surprise you there? Did you know he was coming that quickly, Kyle? Uh, I could see him coming in my mirror for sure. And was hoping those lappers were gonna give me the bottom and the 38 peeled off to the bottom and I knew I couldn't follow him and I just didn't want to go all the way to the top and leave the middle open but you know thankfully Chris Burr is always race is extremely clean and you know could have got it could have got crazier than it did you know coming to the start finish line so thank you to him for, for race with respect there um, what a job done by my team too just a, a great race car I almost gave it away there I wanted to <laughs> getting sideways getting the wall and um, had to fight back from there with our balance. Uh, they got it much closer there in the lead. I, I was happy to pull away as much as we did and was hoping that was going to be enough, you know, to maintain, which it was, but I thought, you know, they weren't going to be able to get as close as they did there at the end. So uh, nerve wracking, but um, thanks to Chevrolet, Hendrickcars.com, Junior Robin Bar, Valvoline, uh, everybody, everybody involved in this deal. This is uh, really cool to get to go race for another championship here in a few weeks. and. You're glad that we don't have to stress over these next two races. The incredible save. The kids are here to celebrate with Dad, Kyle Larson. They're in the championship for what a day for Hendrick Motorsports and the five team. Great playoffs for Hendrick Motorsports. They won the opening race of both rounds. Larson at Darlington, Byron at Texas, and now he wins here at Vegas to secure the spot in the championship four. Kyle Larson is on to another possible title. It's the NASCAR America Post Race Show presented by Progressive. Again, our post race coverage is now also available, streaming on Peacock. 
Take a look at the point standings after race number one of the round of eight. Again, Jeff Burton mentioned it was a three race season or this is going to be a three race season for these eight drivers. Kyle Larson wins race number one has a huge day and a few others struggling as we see Christopher Bell oh so close to the win here but now below the cut line and he is with Kim and Rick a great late race charge by Christopher Bell not quite enough there Larson talked about how respectful you race him but it's a spot for the championship four do you rethink anything you did there in the last moments I mean I don't know what else I could have done um, so very I, I don't know I, I I feel like that was my moment. That was my moment to make the final four and uh, didn't quite capture it. So, well, uh, I don't know, like coming to the checker there, I, I knew that he was going to be blocking. So I'm like, I'm going to try and go high. And he went high, but I don't, I don't even know if I had a run to, uh, to, to get by him there coming to the line. So just wasn't enough, but, you know, a great day, uh, a great day for sure to get those stage points and get a, you know, a second place finish out of it. So, um, I think I saw we're minus two, so we're not out of it by any means, but uh, it would have been nice to lock in. The round of eight continues next week as the Xfinity Series will also be there for the second race of the round of eights. That starts on Saturday at 2.30 on USA with countdown to green at 3 o'clock for the race. Then on Sunday on NBC at 2 o'clock countdown to green, 2.30 Cup Series playoffs. Yeah, what a great battle today. You know, pit stops, hard racing, every, all that was great fun. And next week at Homestead, they'll be ripping the fence. It'll be a ton of fun. Yeah, some drivers lost some points today to the cut line. And, and it's a tight battle, 19, 11, and 20 car, all within two points of each other right there around third, fourth, and fifth in points. It's a heavyweight battle. <laughs> Christopher Bell ran second in the stage, third in the stage, and second in the race. And he's still below the cut line. Points might matter, but you better think win. So much on the line, each one of these races for these playoff drivers. Well, there's more NASCAR and motorsports coverage always available on NBCSports.com. And of course, post-race coverage continuing on Peacock. Coming up next on NBC, it's local news except on the West Coast and later tonight, football night in America, followed by the Giants at the Bills. Congratulations, Kyle Larson. You're on to the championship four. telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.